What's up? What's up? What's up? We are back with episode four of No Labels Necessary because I signed myself. Now, I'm so excited for you to get into today's episode. We got some great topics today. But before we get into it, two quick things. Number one, we are moving to Tuesdays and Thursdays very, very soon. So start to look out for it. If it's not this week, it will be next week for sure where we're dropping every Tuesday and Thursday. So you don't have to wonder when the full episode is going to drop and it just appears like randomly, right? It'll be on YouTube and then very soon all platforms. Now, on top of that, this episode in particular, though, as y'all know, we've been Dugging it out, working through the audio. The first episodes ain't great, but day one fam, I appreciate y'all day one fam from rocking with us. But this episode in particular, we made some improvements. We got rid of a lot of that hiss. However, there's some distortion on my mic. I just want to give you a quick little warning. Quick little warning that parts of me talking, it might be a little bit louder randomly or like if I laugh, it's going to get a little louder. But we did our we're our best all right, to handle that and manage it so it's not like just killing your ears. Our best, right? We did our best and it ain't perfect. And it starts like that a little bit more at the beginning. But for the most part, it, does, it, it evens out a little bit more. All right. So we are aware and we appreciate all y'all feedback and we appreciate y'all thugging out with us. Day one fam, we appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all. Now let's get into today's episode. Let's get it. We want to get into topic number one. And if y'all haven't, you know, you look at the date. We, we fresh off of Halloween. There's a couple of things that we got to talk about, right? As you know, or if y'all have been watching, right? The Halloween theory, uh, if your brand is strong enough, you are able to have people dress up as you on Halloween. So we want to go over a couple of cases, but you'll be surprised at what you see, especially when we get to the second one. Well, it'll, be, it'll be surprises for different reasons on each. So, <laughs> so I would just pull out this first one. I'm gonna let Corey, you know, kick it off. You want to talk about this? Oh, yeah, man. He's a... Uh... He's a part of the Ice Spice agenda, bro. We back on, we back on Ice Spice. The Ice Spice the agenda. Ice Spice agenda, the bro. I, the, hey, on the Ice Spice agenda. Pushing Ice Spice all, all what? Fall twenty two. Have all the last three weeks, a month and how long she been? Around? What did we say last time? She been around like two months. About two months. We yeah. on two and a half months, and now you got Lil Nas X already dressing up as Lil uh, as Ice Spice on Halloween now. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean Ice Spice is super, super connected and she got energy she clout or is it just, does that just mean her movement is moving so well online that you got people like this picking it up? Yeah, well, I think we, we got to show the second one first and then I got my thoughts. All right, all right. Let me see. Well, we're going to bring up this second one. We got Lil Nas X. Oh, by the way, you know, if you want to see the... <laughs> 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 you want to see the comparison? And there you go, right there. Um, and then yeah, let me pull up the second one right here. So twenty four K Golden himself, right? Lil Nas X. These are two biggest artists that we've seen doing it. Cause I was getting questions asked too about like, yo, do you think this is an influencer campaign? I'm like, eh, I don't see too many big influencers do it, so I don't think it's that. I think it's more so a testament to how much attention to TikTok that twenty four K Golden and Lil Nas X. Uh, pays attention to because they are two pretty big TikTok advocators. You know, Twenty Four Golden was the, the right. golden boy at some point. No, no pun intended. And Lil Nas X has been like the new golden boy of TikTok prices like last year or whenever he got super active on it. So I think this is them as regular he, people. You know, Lil Nas X started there too. Like oh yeah, he was one of the first TikTok yeah. hits. Yeah, get so him caught. That both of them are very, very digitally savvy. Like yeah. they, they do pay attention to the internet and they of the internet. So I could see yeah. it actually being some organic shit. Yeah, same, bro. And especially yeah. like. The last episode when we talked about like how hard she's been pushing the meme culture and Twin mm -hmm. Forget Golden does a lot in the meme culture. So it's, it's very, you know what I'm saying? He's like, what, like 20, the point 21. So anybody in that yep. age range, yeah. pretty much paying attention to meme culture. I think Lil Nas X is maybe like 22, 23. Something like that. Yeah, so they're in that age range where it's like, oh, bro, they were probably scrolling these meme pages just like the rest of us and like, yep. oh, I know exactly who I'm about to be yep. this year. Fucking hey. Ice Spice. <laughs> and that's an easy costume, bro, a, a, a what color is that? Orange wig, a green yeah. tank top, and some jeans, bro. Like, <laughs> but that's like a twenty dollar costume right there. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's see what other pictures. Uh, uh, munch, the, the munch. Uh, see, and I, I mean, I think this is <laughs> this is legit, legit. Um, yeah, I think for real, a testament just because both of them 
are so just knowing both of them, everything I've seen from them, they are like watching the internet for real, for real. Yeah. Um, and they are playful like that personality wise. Yeah. Anybody else, I would have definitely thought it was a influencer campaign, but this is the value of it because you legitimately not only show that your brand is that strong, but you basically do have an influencer campaign being ran for you yeah. when people dress up for you for Halloween. Yeah. Like if they don't know who you are already, then they get the who are you? Bam, education. If they do know who you are already, it just makes you feel omnipresent. You're everywhere. You're a part of the experience of Halloween. Yeah. So like there's there's nothing like man having your brand so strong. But it doesn't take a lot because look Ice Spice is a relatively new artist, right? Yeah. Like just being real. So her image though was so strong, people were like, let me cop that. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. all it is. It's not even like she's created the biggest moment of all time or anything you would really necessarily think it would be worthy of like, yo, she's Halloween costume worthy. It's just the image has already hit culture that they know you can identify that. That's why I always remember when we first started talking about her, I was talking about that hair. Yeah, the curly hair, yeah. That hair make a difference, man. Bro, which is crazy too, because like her brand look, at least as of now, it's not anything like super complicated super complex because i think about like like if you wanted to dress up as like michael jackson you're yeah. probably gonna do the big hat the glove you know yeah. what i'm saying maybe the nice white like you gotta go over the top with it bro yeah they have on a six dollar tank top <laughs> an eight dollar pair of jeans and a, yeah. and a burgundy or orange uh curly wig yeah and we immediately know who it is even though it's such a simple dress you exactly. know what I'm saying? i think we tend to think of the costume thing as like very complex dressing you know, I think of like when we had talk about Yachty and Yachty had like the red hair, right? These very kind of like out there looks. And I was like, nah, bro, something about her image is just apparently so transcendent that yep. you immediately know who it is. Like, man, I can't even look at curly hair and I think of Ice Spice. And I don't know who was the last curly hair representative that was going that hard. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They've been completely erased from my mind, at least because of Ice Spice. I don't know. Yeah. Because you know that they've been around. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> you know they've been around. People been wearing uh, curly hair. Just that reminds me of you know when Drake popularized YOLO, right? Yeah. And you know it felt like a new trending thing. I was watching. There's this show called King of Queens or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. Not of the culture in that yeah. way at all. <laughs> And that show probably stopped new episodes in like 2005 or something. That was a fast show, right? It was a good show. That was a fast show. And they said YOLO. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, this is crazy. I know that it wasn't like them taking it and putting it because the show is already over. So, like, a lot of times just taking moments that already exist and then being that new person to introduce it. Yeah. Is so strong a lot, you know. That's Kanye's great at that, but most times artists think they have to create something so new, yeah. right? So she's a testament to that. Before we even leave this um this conversation about the Halloween costume, Shit. though, I want you guys to see this. I'm gonna go back a little bit, actually. Hello, and welcome to episode four of our series, Kenneth Kirkland where we try to determine the difference between name brand alcohol and Kirkland. All right, they have this entire series. This this band, is, they're called Never Ending Fall. Fall. Shout out to y'all. Kind of a country-ish -ish vibe. Excuse me, like there's more than that, but that's, you know, I'm still pretty service level with them so far. But they already have <laughs> someone who did them as a Halloween costume, mm -hmm. right? That series became popular that I just showed, like them playing with Kirkland. I know they got some some uh probably brand sponsorships from Kirkland. I hope by, so. By now. At this point, I, I hope so. I hope so, right? <laughs> right. And now, ew, fighting off. Y'all can't read this text. Fighting off all the men on Halloween with my sexy Kenneth Kirkland costume, right? So they've made an impact, meme culture again because this. Mm. This is meme culture. Yeah, and people, meme culture. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. And let me see. I don't know how frequently they do it. They do it pretty frequently, but they have, they only have 345,000 followers. Yeah. I already got somebody dressing up. I already got somebody now, you know, again, like I said, I'm, I might be a little ignorant. So let me see what their Spotify listenership, just to give y'all context on real time. Cause I don't even know what it is, honestly. Ending. Come on. There we go. Uh, yeah. 
33,000 monthly listeners. Yeah, that's crazy. 300,000 TikTok followers. And you got people dressing up as you on on Halloween, not just because you have so many fans and everybody knows you, but they have that distinct series that stood out. That's all you have to do. Do something distinct and you just have to make that thing click and bam, yeah. there it is. Yeah, and I think it's cool too because when we think of the whole like Halloween costume thing, you automatically go to like bigger artists. But I mean, they're probably the smallest artists that I've seen that's having fans do that. But I saw some like underground rappers like Ken Carson. Um, there's this dude named like Destroy Lonely. Mm. Like Yeet has some fans, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, dressing up as him for Halloween. So it's really one of those things where like, hey, like if you of course have an image that's big enough that it appeals to pop culture, yeah, of course, that's where you're gonna get the biggest pop. But even in these micro communities, because I guarantee you she walked down the street yeah. and 90% of people probably didn't know who she didn't was even know. but the 10% that did know probably lost it but like oh shit you you the people inside from Janet Kirkland right yeah exactly yep. it becomes like this inside joke it's almost like an inside flex too exactly. inside of the community exactly. you know what I'm saying it's like because, I like them why didn't you, why didn't you dress up because better? like they wouldn't have, they're surprised that you even thought about it almost yeah. like that's so creative because yeah. I'm thinking about all these basic costumes and basic yeah. people now you're this option so yeah I get that point yeah I get that point yeah. again that's inspiration. If you do something creative and you make a mark, you don't even have to have a big fan base. Like I honestly did not know they only had thirty three, you know, thousand. Yeah, I don't think that series was like popping for them for too long. Maybe like a two, three months or so. I remember um, Liam first brought it to me maybe like two months ago. Shout out to Liam for for yeah, throwing this on the pod, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so transition. I gotta play this clip, bro. I, you you sent it. Sent it over. Before we get into rollouts, I should have said, yo, we're going to get pretty heavy into rollouts today. A couple of interesting things going on in the marketplace. But there's this clip that, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll just play it. I'll just play it. Trinidad James on Drink Champs. Oh, no, I got him. TikTok muted. Hold up. Let me run it back. Let me run it back. Uh, uh, down here. You know, I got charged 40000 in wardrobe for their wardrobe, referring to Jeezy, Tip, and video. 2 Chains. And if you go back to 2013, you go look at the Algo Everything remix, look and see what T.I. wore. Look and see what Jeezy wore. Jeezy had on a dicky suit, yeah. and T.I. had on Hustle Game. Right. Yeah. His own brand. <laughs> Finesse me out of my own 40 bands. You know what I'm saying? Out of my and label I budget. Fucked up. I did just look at it. You know what I'm saying? I got paid 40. I had to pay 40 bands for that. Exactly. Dog, I'm a stylist, dog. Before <laughs> music, music, he already knew it. Dog, that burnt my soul, dog. Right, right. That burnt my soul. Like, I had to perform that. But you didn't pay, you didn't pay for the verses? No. Oh, okay. So, I, yeah. But they yeah. already jumped on Yo, he said that burnt his soul, bro. Yeah. That shit's funny as hell. That shit's funny. <laughs> bro, I love Trinidad James, bro. Such a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> Such a funny guy. That, yo. That's the game. That's the game. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a growing pain he had to go through as, yeah. a, as a new, because I'll go, everything was, yeah, his first, that was his breakout song, right? It. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah, he didn't, where. yeah, ain't no way he was going to know that. I was out of it. Yeah. But I know that especially hurt. Like he said, he's a stylist. I used to go to a uh, shop at the store he used to work at, okay, or whatever. And um, and I didn't know he was a stylist, but you know he was always dressed like you know one of, like that, like that basically. I'm a collector, you know, with less guy. money, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> he was always dressed like that. So <sighs> I know he's really looking at it like, bro, I this shit. Don't I know how much that shit costs. <laughs> <laughs> but we sell your clothing brand. I know exactly how much it costs. Not much of a whole outfit is. <laughs> Bruh, so yeah, I know that had to hurt, but you know, that's the breakdown for those who don't get it, right? You know, charging the label. Yeah. Especially too when you look at like, man, you ain't paying for it. So of course I'm about to hit your label for it. I actually have a, a, a story that goes with it. Perfect. Like I was um this was when, back when I was like interning for this publicist and I remember at the time we had this client that just got a, a juicy J feature. Uh -huh. And so I just remember the guy was like, yeah, I want it for the video. And I'm talking to my mentor because, like, I don't know shit. So I'm like, bro, how much did, you know, Juicy J charge for, like, this feature? He's like, well, it's only 15K for the feature. I'm like, damn, that's not bad. You know what I'm saying? That's, to me, I felt like it was kind of, like, low for a Juicy J. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, however, <laughs> however, <laughs> uh, we want it for the video. So it's, like, another, like, 10 to 15K for his video appearance, which I'm like, okay, fair. It's, like, an appearance fee. He was like, and he requires at least a $10,000 wardrobe budget. Mm. And that's when I first, because I never heard that before. I was like, man, so artists can make 
other artists pay for the clothes they wear in the video. And then my mentor's like, yeah, they got enough leverage and they're big enough. He's like, because it's like, one, I have an image I have to maintain. So I'm not about to, you know, have my image be my image be turned because you ain't got the budget to which make is, sure which I look is true. Yeah, it was make true. sure I look nice and I look a certain way. And then two, which kind of broke their fourth wall for me with artists. Cause you think of like rappers, especially like man, doesn't he already have like nice ass clothes and you know probably like chains <laughs> and all this shit that he could just pull up in? Yeah. And then I'm thinking like, man, they probably don't want to fuck up their clothes. They right? probably looking like, hey, I'm I'm not about to be out this video shoot with you in the the desert or some shit in my you know my. Two thousand dollars shirt that I paid for. You yep. gonna pay for the shirt that's gonna get messed up in this video shoot. Make this a part of your production budget and Thanks. leave it at that. And I've seen different iterations of that. I have artists that, well, I know artists now that, that do it even at smaller levels. Like, and I get it hundred percent. Who is the artist? I don't remember his name. He's like this. He was like a country artist. Like if if you found a, a country Bruh. artist with a yes, Bruh. yes. I think I oh, yes. you might have mentioned this to me before because yes. I that guy. <laughs> Bro, I remember when I lived over like in the Vinings area, I saw a billboard and it was Juicy J and a country artist. Mm-hmm. You know, like a black, well, the country artist, like a black supreme leather jacket that was hot at the time. Yeah, that guy, that guy, that uh, guy in that video. That was, and I was just like, what the hell? Like, I ain't seen Juicy in a minute. And then seeing with a country artist, the whole thing looked off. But so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's funny. So it's two things, right? Like you said, one, you got the labels. I mean, the, like a lot, a lot of artists are kind of looking at it like, yo, well, I'm charging a label. I'm not really charging you. Mm-hmm. Even though they know it is charging you at the end of the day. But, some, but many of them justify it as if that's what they're doing. Because, I mean, I've seen artists almost like knowingly do that to each other where they're kind of like, cool about it. Yeah. I, I, I even think I remember Future had a situation like this. I don't know. It was something like, Somebody didn't charge somebody. It was, uh, Mad Stein was talking about how she got Future on her, what got Future for her album. And I remember DJ Academics made the point that like, it's Meg and Future. She probably was like, yo, we just going to tax the label because it's Carl Sherry money. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah, that one like, was yeah. different though because yeah. it really yeah. was like, yeah. I don't fuck with my label anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. Which, but again, a lot of artists don't mess with their label and yeah. they look at it that way. On the other end, like you said, maintain an image. I don't know if you remember or thought about this. Remember, we had a situation, a song that we blew up. Uh, music videos yeah. about to go crazy. Yeah. We're about to drop the music video. And then that music video is going to take everything to a whole nother level. However, first of all, it took a while for the music video to get recorded. When the music video is recorded, it's time to come out. The artist says, I don't like how I was dressed. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way <laughs> I look. We need to reshoot this thing because of the politics of it. And see, this is what I try to explain to people. Everybody just think, oh man, these people had a lot of money. It was so, it's, it's so easy to blow a song up. I'm like, when you experience all the back end nuances mm-hmm. that slow some shit down, it's like, it's so much. Like, all right, song's already popping. So it's not even keeping it from popping on level one. But it was, that one had about four more notches to go. Yeah, at least. Right, for real. Yeah, at least. But music video doesn't come out. All right. Now they want to reshoot because she ain't, well, the, the person didn't like how they were dressed, right? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and so then basically music video never comes out. Like managers kind of go head to head. Yeah. Well, actually the manager and the record label uh, of the of one of the artists go head to head and things just kind of sour. So it's kind of like, well, we just got to let it rock as it is. The music video and the rest of the artist support never comes. And that was kind of, well. We are two years later wondering what could have been. What could have been, dog? Uh, what could have been. Been. <laughs> been. Oh, you were going to have two that year on that level. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That was the first Ground one, too. Ground up. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But that, that was, Ground up. Zero, oh, yeah, that zero. Was, yeah, that was a, it was like five months in business at that point. That would have been crazy, like. Entry point to the game. I mean, yeah. it was, but it would have been such a crazier entry point to the facts, game. Crazy facts. Facts. Because that was, you know, just to be real with y'all, right? There's a lot of different campaigns, and sometimes you work more, sometimes you work less, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you We got one as- aspect of it, and then sometimes you're working a whole campaign. We were the only ones touching that thing. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Going crazy. And nobody could take credit for it. N- nobody. <laughs> hey, because, bro, a lot of y'all be taking credit. Especially when uh, when they did label labels, the yeah. major labels. Oh man, that's music marketers out there, man. 
when you're dealing with some people at labels, just know that they're going to take some credit for some of the things that's going on. Yeah. Because their job depends on it. They're trying to get the promotion. And I get it. I can't even be mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why you got to you gotta record the calls and get uh, government names. So if it ever got to come up, you can prove it. <laughs> and get them invoices. Are you telling me I didn't work with Curtis? <laughs> People don't even know his name is Curtis. How do I know that? Yeah, how, do, how, how do I know, bro? <laughs> Why do I have his high school email on the invoice? <laughs> well, I don't got his, his EIN and his social, bro. Duh, duh. So, <laughs> you know, you just, just protect yourself. Protect yourself out here. They just know that you put in the work you put in. But, you know, that's part of the game on the label side. They got to get the promotions. And they got to, whenever a hit rock, um, happens, not only is money being made for that artist, it's a lot of promotions and shifting that's going on in the industry on the back of that artist just to you know be real uh with y'all music marketers and people who are you know professionals who ain't got to that side of things and artists the beauty on your side is when things open up that window everybody is rallying around you because they trying to yeah. they trying to cut uh yeah cap as yeah. much as they can i'll leave it at that and everybody will pay for what you need because last point with this or last one i got with this is that it also explains how artists burn through their budget so fast sometimes. You know, you're, you know, you're kind of break down musical things. You're like, man, there's no way studio time costs that much. There's no way whatever whatever costs that much. And it's like, man, he could have got charged $40,000 for wardrobe for a video fan. Maybe yeah. that's where the budget went. So that's crazy, yeah. bro. It's crazy. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, he said it like he didn't know in real time either. It's like you yeah. found out after the video. Yeah. Yeah. So probably when the label him with the bill, like, oh, you owe us two hundred K. It's not like two hundred K. What forty K for the wardrobe? Hey, bro, that's <laughs> hey, that's that. Oh yeah, we handle it. No, nah, yeah. what did y'all handle, yeah. bro? <laughs> Like Tip say he good, Jeezy said they good, but why are they good? Yeah. Did y'all pay them anything? I need to let me see the itemizations before they travel. We waste their good time because we not be at, we might not be able to do this for real. Yeah. And I also feel him too. He said I gave him free verses. Like at that time, bro, a Ti and Jeezy verse was probably way more than forty k, or at least around that. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. And I can respect the freemium model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get the verse for free and then we charge you in other ways, bro. You know, just like these apps out here. <laughs> hey, man, I, I love it. I love it. Get it how you live. Get it how you live, artists. <laughs> just know that, you know, money's coming out for different ways. Uh, let's get into these rollouts, though. Yeah. Um, so many of them. It's so many of them happening lately. There's two main ones we want to get into, and a little other uh, things as well. But this CLB, not CLB, good lord, her loss. Yeah, her loss. <laughs> <laughs> Roll out. You already you had some things in particular because you've been watching that one more closely than yeah. me. I didn't realize how much has happened. So kind of break down some of the things you're seeing with that one. Yeah, man. So the, her loss is the the Drake and Twenty One Savage collab album. I mean, the rollout for it really started probably as of making this, maybe like two, three weeks ago. There was like a tweet that went out that was like some, I can't remember if it was DJ Academics or some other publication was like, hey, there's a rumor that Drake and 21 Savage are putting the project out. I think Drake or 21, one of them put like the cap emoji. Basically like, nah, he lying, right? Oh, uh, so you think the rumor was paid for? Yeah, 100%. You think the rumor was paid for? Yes, bro. It was a rumor. It was a leak. They said it's nah, cap. No, nah, I don't believe it. <laughs> but you got, we have to think about one <laughs> How much artists like Twenty One Savage and Drake don't leave the house or don't even talk as much? You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't just see them being the type of people moving around just telling everybody that's happening. Mm -hmm. Their team at this point are, are very high level teams, so they're probably not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Drake is Drake, Twenty One Twenty One. There's no way like I mean, I guess there's a way, but I don't think any engineer would risk that. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I could tie to was like, oh, this is promotion. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was such a random. Such a random piece of information that didn't seem too far out there. You know what I'm saying? Like as soon as I saw it, I was like, I can see that. I can see Drake and Twenty One Savage doing a project together. So now, yeah, now I believe it. Like it's definitely coming. They've been like besties for the last like two years. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Hanging out, showing like showing up together. So like when I saw it, I was like, okay, this. Well, at the time, I didn't think it was a part of the rollout. I just was like, okay, you know, Twenty One said cap, maybe it's cap. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you just gotta go by what the artists say. I think a few days later, there was an official announcement of it. Um, they dropped like a promo video for it or something like that. And then I was like, oh, shit. There it is. There it is, bro. He wasn't lying. Now now I'm thinking this is definitely the start of the rollout. So it was originally supposed to come out, I think, last Friday. But um, last Friday had a lot of releases. They were like, Rihanna you know, dropped like her first song in like forever. 
it was like a Chloe Bailey project that came out. It was a bunch of stuff that came out right around that time. And so they got pushed back. They delayed it. They said it had something to do with, I think, like 40 getting sick and, you know, stuff not getting mixed. Which I'm like, oh, I don't believe that, man. Yeah, like, don't believe that yeah, one. Bro, like, mm, y'all saw that Rihanna single about to drop. <laughs> but still, or, you know, maybe they planned for something like that and that was just another part of the rollout. They wanted mm-hmm. to push it out, you know, keep it going out. So then we get into this week, which is when all of the FA stuff really started. For every one pa- And so I think, I don't remember which one came first, but the two biggest things from the rollout was one they did a, a fake Howard Stern interview that's funny as hell, like if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I love when 21 Savage does like personality stuff because you, you don't you know, he's, yeah. he's great at being, showing his personality in a genre where a lot of those artists don't typically show their personality. Right. And so they're very like one dimensional in their personality. Right. So they do the fake Howard Stern interview uh, and then they do like a fake Tiny Desk concert. I ain't seen that one. Yeah, bro. So they do like a fake Tiny Desk concert, which me personally, I mean, if you pull the video up, you'll see, bro, the set looks like the real set. I personally, if I was Tiny Desk, I'd be like, man, y'all could just do the real Tiny Desk concert. We could let you make it comedic. And we could have made this work. Why, why y'all had to go, you know what I'm saying, fake it to that degree? <laughs> let me see. Where is it? I don't uh, Got it. Is it this? Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. yeah look at it, bro. It looks just like it. Yeah, they they wrong for that. Like, just like it, bro. So y'all could have came and used the real setup. Um, so they do the fake Tiny Desk concert. They got a bunch of content flowing out. They tease the track art or the track, um, the cover art for it. And the cover art is this popular model named Suki. Yep. Um, so at first I thought she was a, a big TikToker, but she's a she's like a pretty like well-known model. So, you know, a little bit of influencer marketing, right? All of it is really influencer marketing to a degree. A little bit of that. Um, going back to like some some super localish stuff i remember i think they had maybe had a billboard out here or something i know 21 savage had like his birthday party like a week or two ago mm-hmm. pretty sure there was some promotion around that right so they had the machine kind of building up to it to the whole point oh yeah that's her right there suki and so the however you choose to look at it wherever your moral compass points but the piece that the resistance for it was the controversy that's built around because of this line that drake has towards meg the stallion and so i hit you about it and I was looking and I was like, man, it made me think, bro, there's, there's three C's <laughs> to a good rollout. Talk about it. Three C's, bro. There's creativity, mm. consistency, check, and then controversy. Got him. <laughs> if you were able to hit all three of those points in a really like good way, way that makes sense to your culture and what they're paying attention to, you probably will have a successful rollout. I think the controversy part is maybe like a double asterisk. Like you don't have to do it. But if you add it on top, then there's an there's an enemy for it. It's gonna hit. It's say gonna the hit three hard. again: creativity, Creative. consistency, controversy. I'd say if it's not controversy, controversy per se, it needs to be conversation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just because you know people misconstrue controversy as having to be something so wrong, you know, yeah. problematic and things yeah. like that. So if you're not comfortable with controversy in your conversation, brand, better. conversation, yeah. create some conversation around something. That has nothing that, well, it has something to do with the music and then also, not, it, it creates a different conversation, right? Because like his, his line with the Meg thing started with, oh, he's dissing Meg. It's a music conversation mm-hmm. right? we're talking about the song. And it's now in the, the, at this point, like 14 hours that the album has been out has evolved back into like a domestic abuse conversation. People, you know, making fun of like domestic abuse victims and things like that. So it's it's evolved from a, a music conversation to a much broader conversation. See, I've been off the internet a bit, bro, lately. So tell me about this domestic abuse conversation. Like, what do you mean it's involved into that and why as a relation to this album? Yeah, because like Meg made some tweets that was just like, um, and I'm kind of like paraphrasing, but she was basically saying something like, your favorite rappers come out and, and make fun of a, a woman, like a, a woman that got shot by a man. And you know what I'm saying? Something, something, y'all can kiss my ass. That, that was the Wait, gist of what? That shit ain't fair. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Did they make fun of her because she got shot or something around that incident? Or Yeah, what? Did you hear the line? No, I didn't. I, I told you I've been oh, off. Oh, yeah, you've been off there. I've legit been off, bro. I haven't checked it out yet. I okay. don't know the exact line because I haven't gotten to that part of the album yet. You know, small disclaimer. But it's something like, something about the style. The, Let me see. Pretty much, he says that Tory Lanez didn't really shoot her. That's basically what he says in the song. He's basically like, yo, she lying. You know what I'm saying? Um... But he makes like a, a a little double triple entendre off of it. Let's let's see what exactly what went down. Oh yeah, there it is. This bitch lying about getting shot. 
but she's still a stallion shorty, so she graduated. She ain't heard enough or learned enough. Play her album track one K. I heard enough. But that's the mm. first line. I got this bitch live by getting shot, but she's still a stallion. Very, 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 mm. very Dang. good. Yeah, exactly. Dang. That's what you missed on the internet. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, Sheesh. So it evolved from oh Drake diss Meg to oh Drake is making fun of you know uh, abuse victims, and that's now the bigger conversation mm. that's being had on like Twitter and, and the internet in general. <laughs> So the conversation was started out musically and then built yeah. out to more like social issues. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Drake didn't see that one coming. He didn't see that one coming, right? That next step, that slick door. <laughs> he was walking in line. Nah, nah, because I know he probably wouldn't have. Yeah. Nah, you got to know. Him and I think Tory Lanez are friends. So. I mean, look, I get the, I get addressing a line and saying that and thinking it's going to, you know, create a little something. But the slip into making fun of domestic abuse. Oh, yeah, yeah. That twist. Yeah, he didn't see that coming. Nah, he, he, yeah, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't trying to play with that. Yeah, so, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's created a conversation. Hey. It's definitely done that. Uh-huh. Conversation. And, I mean, I know we're going to get into it, um, but that was even something similar with, like, the Taylor Swift thing. Like, there was a conversation that started around her role. She had her controversy slash conversation C nah, moment. You know what I'm saying? Let's get straight into it. What was, uh, what was hers again? So she has this video that she dropped. I don't remember which, exactly which video it is because I'm, I'm not a Swifty, you know what I'm saying? But right. the in the video, she like steps on the scale and the scale says like that. And so it's her talking about her body positivity issues, things like that. And the internet just took it and ran with it, bro. Oh, yeah. Her her community loves that type of stuff. Yeah. They definitely love that type of stuff. Yeah. But it's been pretty intense on both sides. Like people talking about, you know, she's fat shaming. She, she's, you know, contributing to the... the, the um, What's the word I'm looking for? The the anxiety and stress that people in that community might be feeling. And there's people on the other side that saying like, no, like she's just talking about her experiences with her weight, how she feels about it. She's not making fun of the community. So, but it's created the conversation of, hey, is Taylor Swift fat shaming? Is she fat shaming because she thought she was fat? Yeah, and the video is like, I mean, the, when she steps on the scale, it just says fat, but the way it's kind of been interpreted, like this is how she's talking more about like her self esteem issues and like right. how she felt about her body and things. Man. And people are like, yo, why is it bad that when you look at the scale, it says fat, right? And now it's, it's, they're taking it to the comments, I think, of like, are you insinuating that fat is bad because you in this video feel bad about the scale saying fat? You know what I'm saying? And so like, that's why I said the conversation evolved to, Yo, Taylor Swift is fat shaming. And then now it's both sides of it. Either defending her very intensely or going at her very intensely. This is what I love about today, man. It's so <laughs> easy to create conversation, dog. Because yeah. Pete, just when you have that scale, especially. Yeah. Somebody going to get mad. Because that makes no sense, man. Somebody going to get upset, You can't bro. talk about your own experience. <laughs> People always are going to project their insecurities and feel like you you calling them out mm-hmm. one way or another. That's... That is interesting. Yeah, but it's that is interesting. But even even Tyler Swift gotta have the controversy, bro. And I don't yeah. going back to what you said about Drake. I don't think she planned for it. Like she Not probably that, yeah, that that, yeah. they always gonna take it at angle you didn't mean to. That's <laughs> yeah. just the nature of it. Just like politics, bro. They can flip every single thing into something negative. Yeah. You think you're good? <laughs> nah, nah. Not if it doesn't fit my agenda. But I Taylor has been known for this, and it's interesting because this particular project, it wasn't as heavy leaning thematically and narrative wise in terms of like being about an ex and Mm -hmm. using the story of who she's dating that was a huge conversation kind of controversy type thing that she would do track after track after track and that was like the story that you put around um taylor but now this one everything that i've gathered has been like like confidence i'm renewed i'm renewed yeah, right yeah. i'm renewed i got baptized she she entered her bad bitch era, bro no facts yeah, like, that's like, that's the energy she's yeah. giving it and she's giving it it's like i'm being the bad bitch that i can be yeah with her brand yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's not all the way, but I'm trying to be a little bit more dark. Yeah, you know, and because she's trying to create wiggle room, and you can go hard with that and Miley Cyrus it. I'm just gonna break the mold and give myself wiggle room, or you can play it safe and conservative, which is more Beyonce and Taylor Swift, yeah. and they evolve slowly over time, creating that wiggle room. Yeah. So you know, you could go either route, and that's why I always say when people stress so much about their brand 
and getting caught in a box. But it's like, if you know what you're doing, you can always get out the box. You yeah. can give it some time, yeah. right? But you can just, in that scenario alone, Rihanna, Molly Cyrus, oh, we break the mold quickly. Yeah. Good girl going bad. Literally, with Rihanna, Miley Cyrus just did it and showed it. But then you got Taylor and Beyonce, right? Which is funny. You got those two sides of the yeah. fence. But still, they they both had both characters, yeah. right? And you do it over time. So, now nah, it's it's interesting what Taylor's doing, though, because she's breaking records. Yeah, bro. And I think, too, with the brand thing is interesting. Is like, I don't know. I always look at, like, when you're a big artist and you have that much scale, a rebrand is just, like, having different conversations with your audience and yes. then showing different parts of your life or your lifestyle. So, it's like, hey, maybe I was very family-oriented and super clean, and all you ever saw from me was me at my niece's birthday and, you know what I'm saying, me at, you know, I don't know, at the family cookout. Now I want to be this super wild person and you see me at the clubs, at the parties, hanging out with certain celebrities. At the time when they were the nice, clean family person, they probably were also doing the party club things, right? But now it's, hey, I'm going to show you this side. I'm going to talk about things in a different light. And that's going to slowly over time make you see me in a different way. That to me is all the rebrand is. I know it's deeper than that because of the things you have to kind of like execute things a certain way. But that's really what it is. Like, hey, I am now a different person. And I want to talk about and show you different things. That's all a rebrand is, man. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's, yeah, just showing different parts of yourself. And that goes back to artists stressing out about showing too much of themselves at the beginning, not mm-hmm. realizing, yeah, just take your time and you can show a different part of yourself because that's going to be a part of your rebrand yeah. or a reintroduction to expand how people see you. Yeah. And, but nobody can catch it all at once anyway, so why try? Yeah. 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 And then, Right, well, let me pull this up. So this is the headline. Was Taylor Swift wrong to use the word fat in a video? This woman says, that's how I used to feel whenever I weighed this myself. So I'm sure she's, what is it, sympathizing with Taylor. On the other side, you got to look at these numbers that Taylor's hitting. Like, which, bring it all, bring it full circle before we even get into that. Because like, Taylor broke, what, 511 records. Yeah, I think I think officially <laughs> like <laughs> officially 73 they said yeah. whether it was iTunes. She was literally every single song on the top 10. I think she was the first person to do that, not just first woman. Yeah. She um, beat out, I think Drake was the last person to get close. He had like five of yeah. the top 10 or something. But where where can I find this? What I, you know what I'm looking for. There we go. Bam. See y'all y'all actually can't see this, but I, if you go to Spotify, it actually says 2022 Taylor Swift at the bottom of Midnight's, uh, well, the Midnight's uh, album. Now, why is that relevant? This is what the record label imprint is usually showing right here. That's what you usually see. Record label, maybe distributor or just something like that, right? Taylor is indie, y'all. Like, she for real indie. It's probably like Bad Bunny indie. She might be sharing pieces of her company with people at the level she is, but she's indie she owns her record label she owns her company just like bad bunny owns part of uh what is it riser it started with an r yeah i'm in that label ah, but yeah whatever the label yeah. is like taylor's killing it she's killing it and yo when she re-released her albums and basically instead of taking those albums done uh, down let me see if i can find it she just put like taylor edition yeah in parentheses, yeah. so the fans know. Let me go stream this one instead of the other one. Yeah, like which I do. She's bro, she's gaming the system crazy. But she she literally like you know an artist is big and has power when they make a move and then the whole industry shifts around it within like seventy two hours. Because that's what happened with that. <laughs> like, bro, it was like within two days, the industry as a whole, like Billboard, all these different people had rules about how you can do that now. And it's like yeah. they had that. They were like, oh no, hell no, we gotta we gotta get ahead of that. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. She's about to spark a revolution. <laughs> Just like that conversation with the bundles, right? Yeah. Remember, yeah. Uh, I think you had shared one, one of those videos too, where it's like, all right, she's still doing bundles, but the bundles have to be around the music. So they got rid of like that, the yes. merch bundles and stuff like that. Well, no, it's, they didn't get rid of it. Now the rules for it is like the everything that's in the bundle has to be for sale separately on the website. So you have to be able to buy everything individually. Right. And it has to all ship out the week of release for the account. Yes, that's what yeah. it is. That's so, what it is. So it's like you got to have the yep. infrastructure to even right. make that happen to, to play the, the bundle. Now you got to have the money to even be able to play the bundle game. To actually play the bundle yeah. game, which is different because 
Now you have to prepare for that yeah. months in advance to be able to provide all this merch and ship all these things. So yeah. you put yourself at a risk having all this inventory on hand and not necessarily being able to get off the merch. Yeah. Or if you get off, it, it's not necessarily for the first week, which is not hitting those yeah. uh, the, those metrics you want. So because basically Billboard was trying to prevent people from selling merch, right? Week one. And then not actually shipping it till months later because they yeah. really can't do it. So it's like you just finesse them getting a little pre sale. Yeah, exactly. And you still waiting for your big baller brand shoes yeah. five years later. <laughs> like basically the <laughs> game was like got those. The game was really getting finessed with pre orders. Like especially yeah. like in rap rap bro, all yeah. that they they were killing it with like the different brand collaborations, right? X rapper might do a t shirt drop with V Loan or something mm-hmm. uh, to promote the album. And like you said, this shit ain't coming out for three months, but hey, yep. they bought that today. Yep. And so I, I understand why that rule change got made, but like looking at the Taylor Swift situation, even the new rules, it's like, man, they really have either you gotta like really believe in that you're gonna sell it enough that it's even worth it for you to attempt that strategy. Cause imagine like Taylor Swift, I don't know, buying up a warehouse of like half a million pieces and they're only selling like 20,000 or something. That would, be, that would hurt, you know? Oh, yeah. And if you're a small artist and you're thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to do at least 10K, you know what I'm saying, yeah. this, this week and you only sell 200 t-shirts, like that shit would hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because you, mm-hmm. you have to pre-buy in order to even be able to play the game. So now you're going to think long and hard before you decide, do I want to try mm-hmm. this merch strategy? Is the the potential outcome of it even worth me attempting to do it? The game, it would I be much better off still attempting maybe my pre-order strategy or regular merch selling strategy but there's a lot lower overhead and a lot less risk involved with it now because I'm not trying to play that game anyway. So, right. you know, so it's like, I think it's going to make artists think real hard about they even want to gain the system. We're only going to probably see major label artists and artists with a lot of money really gaming it because it's not worth it for 99% of the other artists. Yeah, I think that's a good way to look at it because it's not eliminating a game, it's increasing the cost of the game, mm-hmm. you know, the price of entry. So fewer people are going to play it. Fewer people are going to take the risk, and the people who do it are going to do it way less often. Mm-hmm. So that makes a lot of sense. And then you look at the way Taylor did it from a standpoint of sure. all these incentives, yeah. right? It's like, oh, I got a couple of songs on this uh, vinyl that aren't on Spotify. Got yeah. some songs on Spotify that are on the vinyl. And I think she had maybe one other medium that she also provided throughout. Oh, oh also, she had the show tickets, right? Yeah got either they got pre no they, they didn't even get the ability to buy show tickets i don't think i think, I think they it got was the a, ability to buy them early yeah right because all the stuff she did pre-rollout was pointing towards vinyl sales like she was going yes. hard for the vinyl hard sales. yeah hard and probably anticipation of this is? you know what why do you think vinyl sales was a focus to start off i think in t- anticipation of this like they you know because going back to what we just said like if you're an artist that knows you have the capacity and resources to play the game like you're going to try to understand, like, what do I have to do to, to, to truly maximize my shot at winning this mm-hmm. part of the game? Oh, we got to sell a bunch of products and make sure they can they can move out first week. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's only focus on selling product then. Like, let's we don't care about pre-save links, right? We don't care about early downloads and nothing like that. We want people to buy this product that is going to help me shoot to the top. And this is the thing. <laughs> you want to focus on the metric that makes the most sense yeah. that's going to have the biggest impact. And I feel like a lot of people get caught up in their rollouts trying to do too many things. It doesn't mean you're going to have a simple rollout where there's only one thing going on because a lot of the best rollouts have multiple things going on, but you still got to find out which one is the big domino. Mm-hmm. Like if, if all else fails, if this one works, I'm going to get at least 70% out of this that I want out of it. And for her, like you said, that's the, the, the uh the vinyls because also yeah think about it like streaming the streams are going to happen yeah right so don't just focus on that like you said pre save and like, she don't fuck with streaming and she doesn't mess with streaming she doesn't like streaming and yeah. she doesn't like streaming right yeah. for a variety of reasons the money the the control all that the data all that stuff but so it's like where can I focus and how can I make this a fan experience she's one of the best at making like fan experiences even if you don't might, you might not check her music or whatever but like if you track how she in, uh interacts with her fans and how hard they go for her, yeah uh, taylor's probably she's she's definitely top 10 right now i'm just saying top 10 because i don't want to say number two <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be like number one and then start some conversations but she in the top 10 for sure i can say that comfortably she's damn near in her own league bro what well, is in her own league for real for real it's not 
you know, we got Bad Bunny. I mean, she beat Drake, bro. Drake, Bad Bunny, The Weeknd, Adele. Oh, they're the only ones that really get close, bro. And they're not even, I don't think, uh, close. That's a fact because what they said, she got over a million sales in a week, which it was like, what, 1.5 or 1.7 this yeah, time around? Somewhere there, yeah. And she's the first person to do that since, since her. her. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it was like, I think it was the, the Beatles had the first, however many top. Uh, billboard, you know, multiple billboards, and then mm-hmm. I don't remember if it was her and then Drake and then her again, or like her and then Drake, but like she just keeps consistently coming up in these very high level achievement, you know what I'm saying? And these yeah. high level achievements and conversation is like who, who is not many artists like doing that consistently. So I've, I've personally earned a lot of respect for Taylor Swift over the years because of that. Cause it's like, you know, you can say what you want about her music. But she be out here trailblazing for the industry, bro. Like, on some real shit. Her moves, yeah. bro. You got to watch her moves, man. Yeah. yeah. And, bro, I've been so deep into the, the Taylor Swift spear because of that document I sent you, bro. Like, it's crazy. I'll be seeing Taylor Swift <laughs> in my sleep. <laughs> dreaming, about, <laughs> dreaming about her rollout and her numbers, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> I got the whole content breakdown. We got to put that, that document out. Yeah, somewhere. We'll put that, we'll Not put yet. That out. I got to finish it, but, you know. All right. <laughs> Oh man! So we also I, I'm gonna show. I know you haven't seen this yet, but this rollout conversation brings me to another another little something. At least you you don't think you've seen it, but two. No, I don't even want to say that. Crystals, you know, Crystals a restaurant. Yeah, you ain't seen their ad. No, <laughs> they, they 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 they're coming up, man. They're is that Brittany to, Renner? They, I think that is Brittany Renner. No, do you, do Renner. you think that's Brittany Renner? Yeah, yeah. Damn, so look like <laughs> little, little, look. Yeah, check, <laughs> check, check check this shit out, bro. Attention, a ten is speaking. These three new Crystal side chicks are thicker, juicier, and crispier than ever. Keep your main thing if you want. We just want to be your side chick. Oh. Bro, I didn't know where that was going. Bruh. I didn't know where that was going, bro. That is so fucking genius, bro. That's <laughs> that's so genius, bro. Who at the Crystals marketing team thought to put that together, bro? That's what I want to know. I uh, I am glad you asked. <laughs> Check this out, man. Check this yeah. out. Crystals, Brittany, Renner, commercial. <laughs> All right, let's see if they say it without bam. Two chains mm. and crystals launch sidekick camp, sidekick campaign with Brittany Renner. Two chains. <laughs> hey, he got the sauce. He had the vision. He did, bro. He, he had the vision. That's a, that's a that's a damn genius uh, ad idea. I can't even <laughs> lie. Like I don't know. I don't know if I would have came up with that. Bro, I think I got it as like a YouTube B roll <laughs> ad or something, bro. That shit threw me off, man. Cause and then I was like, wait, you know, I look, I was like, who's that? Yeah. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> then I was like, this Brittany Renner. Ah, oh, she get me every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might go to uh, Crystal's after I leave me. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think I saw one on the way over here. <laughs> yo, yo. So I, it's a lot of things that I I got from this man. Like <laughs> one, it's beautiful to see artists take their creativity and apply it in yeah, a corporate sphere, right? Yeah. Like, cause that's a very real path. And there's so many ways to get the money these days. If you show creativity to so artists, and we have more examples of this, we actually need to break this down at some point. But when you build out your career, if you go about it in a way cre- that's truly creative, cr- truly thoughtful, then you're basically creating a portfolio. Mm. All right. Like people see your vision, the ability to execute it, the way you um, understand aesthetics, the way you are able to talk to a certain audience. They respect that. Yeah. Now you, you see how that translated for somebody like Pharrell and, and Kanye versus right an artist that you're just hacking TikTok and hacking like some of these playlists or just other types of marketing to get the streams. And that's great because that's not necessarily every artist. Every artist, it doesn't necessarily have a true creative directive visual, you know, a vision. Right? Yeah. Like Tyler, the creator, somebody who could do something like that, right? Yeah, 100%. A lot of artists don't necessarily have it, and you are just more from a music standpoint. And that's great, too. But the ones who are truly, truly, like, you're creative and that's your bag, and I know shit is more expensive to do that way, the production value, but the long term is 
you you can do stuff like this and people respect you for it. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about like the creative assets being the artist's way of building up a portfolio. That, I never, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense because you know, in music you don't think about things like a portfolio, a resume. Yeah. You know, unless you like on the back end trying to get a job, but that's <laughs> exactly yeah. what it is because they probably like, oh, well, Two Chains has. You know the the billboard was a billboard. No, the GQ show that he did. Right, he got you know, GQ show. Two Chainz has really creative and amazing videos. He got a lot of videos of the whole crazy pink, pink trap house stuff. Yeah, yeah that stuff. Yeah, right. oh, yeah, I forgot that was a crazy rollout. Yeah. yeah, so he yeah he yeah. has a crazy portfolio, but I never exactly. thought about that. Exactly, and like the testament of what Two Chainz has done creatively or had done around his brand creatively, even though it was through collaborations. Is the fact that when you found out that it was two chains, you weren't completely like surprised. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it may, actually made it make sense. It made it make sense, <laughs> right? So it's it's an interesting thing. And on the other side, right, you got to look at this Britney Renner situation and compare it with. I Our think Meg, Meg did something with like Popeyes, and oh, Sweetie yeah. did something with maybe McDonald's. We know Travis yeah. did McDonald's thing. Yeah. Like, so there's these opportunities to use your cultural like savvy or cultural currency to monetize in ways that weren't available before because all these brands are understand the culture is valuable more and more so they're like how can we get in and they're not being they're being shameless about it back in the day you know in, in the 90s still you know the tommy hill figures all, all like a lot of these brands they became aware some of them became aware but they weren't truly acknowledging it mm -hmm. now they stuff like this they're shamelessly <laughs> chasing it down like how can we get in yeah. and we know that we got to use some of these actors in the community to to you know get that attention yeah so like the opportunities that are going to come for artists or anybody who makes themselves a character in the community because obviously you know britney isn't an artist but like like i said to travis and and uh and Sweetie and and Meg have all had those type of collaborations. But this is another thing that was genius about, let me see if I could find it, about crystals that I appreciated from this. Let's see, I'm gonna find it real quick. I know they talked about it in um, Complex too. Uh, let me see. At, at Crystal, we are here to disrupt the QSR, that's quick service restaurant, something like that, landscape, and are excited to be working with Brittany Renner as she has a pulse on the culture. See, pulse. Like mm -hmm. that's what they're looking for, right? We know everyone has a favorite already. So instead of fighting to be your go-to, we're happy to be your little something on the side. That's right? Beautiful. That's beautiful. Beautifully that's stated. Beautiful. <laughs> And what makes it even better is understanding your market position. Yeah. We know we aren't going to beat McDonald's. We know we aren't going to beat whoever is ahead of them. It's a lot ahead of Crystals. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, they got a, a steep hill. But building that brand <laughs> as something on the side, like so, there's a lot of power in being Lyft and not Uber. Yeah. Like, there's still a lot of money on the table. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And yeah, you might have your appetizers when you're at McDonald's and all these other places, but just as a whole, it's the second option. I'm going to go to Crystals. And they need to stick the landing, right? This is something that brings initial attention. There's a lot of follow up, right? So we talk about create conversation for the rollout, mm -hmm. right? This creates conversation. You got to keep following up. There's more things that they need to do to stick the landing and make sure it stays in people's minds as a, a second option. But boy, did they did they aim, ready, aim, fire, and and hit that that yeah. spot with this one. Yeah, only thing I wish they did differently because you said you you got it as a YouTube ad, right? I think I got. I'm pretty sure that I got it as a YouTube ad. Um, if not that, now nah, it had to be a YouTube ad. It had, to, or I might have ran across it on as an ad on like a Instagram or something. But I'm pretty sure I saw it as an ad. I already know. I already know what you're gonna say. You wish they did differently. Go wish, ahead. Wish go they ahead. made it a meme strategy, bro. <laughs> wish they made it a meme strategy. Made strategy to make it a meme it's strategy. Perfect for it. Like it's, it's made for it, bro. Like. <laughs> And the internet, and like the internet, well, the meme culture in particular is no stranger to Britney Renner as a brand. She's been, she's the face of hella yes. memes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's been perfect, bro. I don't see enough corporations doing that, like taking advantage of meme strategy. I think, and I don't think they quite understand that part of it yet. Yeah. We saw Wendy's really uh, take advantage of like Twitter, right? Yeah. And Netflix does it. Netflix uh, will do what's it. What's Netflix do? They'll do it around like a code of movies. Like when Bird Box came out, they were using a meme strategy. Like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They do that. They, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But I think that's clearer to them because movies are entertainment industry, yeah, right? still entertainment, yeah. That's yeah. that industry. I think 
play, you know, restaurants and some of these other out, um, who are outside of the entertainment industry, they're starting to understand how we use entertainment figures and culture. But yeah, they don't quite understand all the marketing strategies that are available when you go that route. Yeah. Yeah, like I can't believe. I'm gonna have to go back and look through the shade room or something. Like I refuse to believe nobody posted about about. Hey them. man, hey man, hey, you know how this shit goes, bro. They see yeah. the mean pages are. Yeah, if they see, <laughs> you know how. To, if they, <laughs> hey, I got this this uh, campaign. What are your prices? Oh yeah, it's four hundred dollars. All right, bet you send it over. Yes, crystals and Britney winner. Oh, crystals and Br- actually, we're two thousand yeah. dollars for a corporate. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're going to run they run the prices up so i don't even i I think they probably didn't because crystals probably would have still invested in the higher price right? yeah. yeah but that's how it goes right they they literally will just say oh yeah no our corporate fees which makes literally no sense there's no there's oh i know you got more money yeah so i'm gonna charge you more that's what they literally <laughs> tell you <laughs> but the <laughs> but the thing is what did, I, what did I just say? Uh, oh, they probably didn't go that route, so they probably didn't get the prices risen on them. But on the other side, you know these companies on the meme side, if they recognize something like that, they'll also say, ah, nah, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to post unless they pay me. Because they know that they're advertising something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, understanding your value type of thing. Yeah. So we see that unless, all right, the power of popping. When you get something popping, then they got to chase it because they know it's going to give them views, which is yeah. still value for them. So you didn't have to pay them, but they post it anyway because they're like, hey, shoot, it's a conversation. I got to be a part of the conversation. So I guess they didn't understand how to quite get it popping. Um, but this is also the beginning. So maybe it's coming. You know, maybe they're yeah, just true. laying the yeah. groundwork or maybe they're listening to this podcast and y'all going to give us a little video, you know, a little fee, oh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, for the <laughs> game we just dropped on y'all. Yeah, but I would love to be a part of that, bro, because I, I, yeah. I see the vision for it. Hell yeah. Like, Chris was doing a lot culturally, though, right now, because remember they got the one over in Howell Mill that had, the, um, they did the whole cultural movement, like Keith uh, did the influencer event there? Oh yeah, and they decked yeah. it out, made it the whole hip hop culture. Yeah, Crystal has been going hard recently. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's on the agenda for this this next coming year, but it does feel Bro, strange. You know what's on the agenda? We, we are on the agenda. <laughs> we are the agenda, bro. There's a video. I'm a I'm a pull it out. We're gonna probably have to do a whole talk on this. It's called How to Sell to Negroes. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen that. I had never seen it before. I just saw some of it. We got to talk about that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a whole little just like side pie special topic, bro, because that is interesting. It brings out a lot of shit. Yeah. brings out a lot of shit. And most of the you like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The nail on the head. Uh, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. But check this out, too. I want to talk about this pre-release marketing matter anymore. But before that, because we talk about rollouts. Billy McFarlane, you remember who this is? No. Fire Festival. The guy that started it? Yeah, the, oh, the, the crazy dude. Oh, he out. Oh shit. Yeah, he out. And he and he just as bold as before. I mean he looked healthy, man. Like he did a hard sentence. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> like it was sweet in there, bro. Like, hey man. Yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was it, <laughs> let me just play. As you might know, I effed around. And because of that, I definitely found out. Obviously, I've had a little bit too much time to think about this, but I do feel like the moment's right to start making this up to everybody. You might have guessed, but I'm working on something new. This time, it's a little crazier, but a whole lot bigger than anything I've ever tried before. I promise I'm going to tell you everything in November, but before we get there, there's one thing you need to know now. This time, so what he says is this time everything is free. All right. And they cut it off here, I think, because he actually got banned on not banned on TikTok. They they banned that specific post though. Mm-hmm. They took it down and he had to cut the end off or cover it up. So he says, this guy, hey, bro, he he killing it. No, he, he, he he definitely fine, man. Everything <laughs> is free. So he takes the the piece of paper off the board and there's a phone number there. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you know, TikTok don't like phone numbers. Yeah. So I don't even think it was a Billy McFarlane thing specific because we know you're a scammer type dude. It's like, yeah, we know, you know, we don't like links in bios, phone yeah. numbers, and all that stuff. So trying to push these miners off the platform. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yes, man, this dude is fresh out. First day out, coming out, <laughs> coming in is like, yo, I'm back. Let me play this beginning because I <laughs> we were talking. At, <laughs> it's it's funny, bro. Really. Hey guys, it's Billy McFarland. Yeah, As you might know, I effed around, and because of that, I definitely found out. That's actually my least favorite part of the whole video. It is my least favorite part <laughs> of the video, but again, it's the culturally aware yeah. that he plays on constantly. Yeah. And I wonder if he's still messing with the fuck Jerry people. I uh, doubt it. I, I feel like I maybe. don't know. Yeah, that's a mm. that's a that's a slippery slope. Should we be getting back together because of how things went down? But at the same time, I don't know. They were kind of in cahoots, so it's like I could see him still being cool. And even if he doesn't, he uh, today he's probably going to transition to TikTokers. One hundred percent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like they don't if they fuck with him, they'd be perfect. If they don't, he's probably like, well, it's a whole new marketplace yeah. over here. Yeah. Let me go hop on these these uh I can't think they use I can't think of their name. The, the two girls, the sisters. Uh, the Demilios, yo. Let yeah, me go hop on these Demilios. The you know yeah. Give them some ultra VIPs and get them out. <laughs> yo, I I one hundred percent can uh yeah. I can see this thing becoming something. I don't know what he's gonna do because he but he said it's free. I wonder is if it's complete misdirection. He's gonna drop it in November, he says. So we'll we'll wait and see. But I just had to <laughs> just show you this because I came across it and I was like, yo, that's this guy is one this dude crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just like when you watch the fire step, it's like, dang, this dude just he keeps going. He keeps he messes up and he just keeps like, yo, I'm gonna finesse it somehow. Someone's like, no, it's not gonna happen. <sighs> like the the funny, I think this is a Netflix version one. When they were at the, this is like maybe ten minutes into the doc. If it's not ten, it's it's very close to the beginning. And dudes like, yo man, like everybody's gonna have to go out to boats. We don't have enough plumbing for this to work. There's like a legit like architect dude or mm -hmm. whatever, um, or whatever you know, infrastructural type dude giving him advice. There's no way you're gonna be able to do this on this particular island. There's not enough plumbing for bathrooms. Oh, yeah, da 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 da. If you want to do this, at best you're gonna have to send people off to a cruise ship at night. And then it's like the next scene. So that guy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Like, dang, they fired the only dude who's making sense. I was like, this shit about to go downhill. And that was like, this is the beginning. <laughs> that was that was that was classic, man. Did that come out during the pandemic? I think so. Man, pandemic. That happened right before the pandemic, right? Like yeah. literally the summer right before, right? Hey, let's let's see real quick, man. I, it was some good content during the pandemic, man. They had our, <laughs> <laughs> they had our uh our attention for real. That might have been it might have been 2019. Yep, 2019. Oh, yeah. So it was yeah. before the pandemic. Yeah. Right before it. Oh man, but it was definitely some good content during the pandemic. That was that was the the, the, the preamble for it. We'll say that. It's just crazy, bro, because I feel like most scammers that try to come back, they usually hop into other industries. Like, ah, uh, I've kind of burned my bridge over there. Let me go yeah, you no know, fuck around with something over here. He was right. like, Nah, like I'm I, I can get it this time. Like <laughs> this time I got it. This is why I think we're in this slippery slippery slope era today, though. No matter what happens, you can flip it. Yeah. Like can be entertaining we, enough. It's, people just want to be entertained. You can scam the world, and now people want to know how you get scammed the world. Yeah. And now they know, oh, you're good enough at marketing at least, right? It's no difference than, oh, snap, you just hacked this government. Well, shoot, we need to hire this dude because he know how to hack. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, yo, you just finessed some, you know, middle class folks on Wall Street with your pink stocks. Was it pink? What a, some, what do you call the, it's not the stock market, it's the pink whatever it's, it's the lower <laughs> stocks like the ones that are less than a dollar but oh the penny stocks you found penny stocks penny stocks mm -hmm. maybe i don't know why i'm thinking the word pink it's relevant somehow but yeah. that's what size the point the wolf of wall street you know what i'm saying yeah he was doing that now oh yeah i want to learn your sales system yeah because obviously you can get at kind people i just want to learn the skill set to kind people but not because i'm morally good right yeah, yeah. And, or we just want to share your story, hear you speak, because you're an interesting character. No matter what happens, if you get, if you fail at a high enough level, you can flip it today. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great point. That's the market <laughs> we are. So if you fail, you 
fail big, dog. You're not gonna fall, you know, too far. You're already high up. <laughs> that's the fact, bro. I saw. That's how I thought when I was leaving college, dog. I was like, I didn't want to work at some of these jobs because I was like, yo, if I, because I was in a startup world, I was like, bro, if you do a startup, you start something, and you get that going far enough. You can get to like CEO or, or the C-suite faster, right? Mm. And then once you're there and you do something legitimate that's big enough, you're going to stay there. People are going to want you to be a part of their suite, even if you're like not the CEO. We're like, oh, well, we, we want you on our executive team because you mastered some skill at a high level and you've built this thing yeah. versus going the ladder way up, which just wasn't my way within yeah. corporate. That, that just didn't, you know, it didn't speak to my soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like that's literally what it is. It's like you get to skip steps by going to outside and doing something big enough on the outside where if you do have to be a part of a traditional corporation or anything like that, hey, uh, you can you start at a different spot and you skip levels and people are like, yo, man, this person wasn't X out. It's like, hey man, hey, look, you should you should have taken that risk. <laughs> you should have taken that risk. You you hate that I took the risk and I did some good things, and now look, I failed. Into where you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. So you got a degree, I got results. I, hey, <laughs> results, baby. It's just like um, what's his name? We work. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know that guy's name, but we work ended up being the way he went went about it was like a very scam cult type behavior, and now he's running some other billion dollar company. Okay. I, I ain't know it started like that. Oh man. Yeah. Bro, you gotta watch the We Work doc. I got a doc. Yes. I doc. Know. We have to, but we're gonna start recommending docs and movies and shit, brother. The We Work Doc, why, I swear to God, dog, you'll be like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like he was doing it like a cult. And I I was gonna apply for We Work at one point in time. Yeah. And one of the requirements was you had to be willing to go to this festival. They basically had their own Tomorrow World festival, right? or a fire festival, whatever you want to call it. They had that type of festival that they did once a year for all their employees. And it was, the a music, was like a music festival? Yes. Oh, okay. It was like lit, like out in the woods somewhere, the music, the mu- like the, the, the full-blown festival on par with any of the festivals that you would see. That was a part of it. And I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all gonna grab me to do some, some, like, something like that? I was like, nah, that ain't for me. You know... <sighs> See, what I learned when I was doing traditional work for ter- certain types of environments, what I learned was their version of fun was not mine. So when people <laughs> be like, work hard, play hard, yeah, I was like, work hard, work hard again. That's what it was for me. <laughs> it was like, I wasn't a big beer guy like when I was in the, like, the sales and stuff like that. And they were, you know, yeah, we had some beers. And I'm like, ah. Oh, man, bro, you know, this was Henny. This would be fun for me. I'm gonna go play ping pong, but it's really not that fun. I want some beer. But if I pull out the Henny, y'all be looking at me crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it was like that. I just wasn't down for it. And I was like, y'all gonna take me away from the shit that I'm trying to build for myself. But, but yeah, now that watch the doc, bro. I swear, watch the WeWork doc. And another thing that I've been wanting to watch just because of what we do, it doesn't. I haven't seen anything that makes it seem like it's interesting so don't don't watch this anybody <laughs> and tell me it's bad i'm just saying i saw it and i keep saying i'm gonna check it out i'll let y'all know if i think it's good but there's a, a documentary on spotify you seen that one yeah well i haven't seen it yet but i did see it it's yeah, yeah. it like called the playlist or something yeah like i'm gonna check it out it doesn't look good honestly i haven't seen anything that told me it looked good yet yeah but you know obviously what we do i'm gonna check it out and see what's up and then see some I, sauce good drop yeah yeah, yeah. I, I doubt it's gonna be sauce but maybe it's gonna be something interesting. I really just wanna see them. I hope they talk about the whole like fake artist playlist thing that we're doing. Probably still. So. Yeah, I hope they talk about that. I That's all so. I hope. I'm gonna watch it too. I'm gonna it's, check it out. It's not a doc though, right? It's like maybe a movie. I think it might be a, more of a movie than a doc. Mm. So, you know, reenactments. But, you know, we'll, we'll make that a homework. We'll watch it and then talk about that one day. I bet. Yeah, we, I'm with it. We put that in there with Intergalactic, bro. You, that's you. I got I already seen it. Is that on Netflix too? Oh, it is on Netflix. Yeah, it's yeah. on Netflix. Oh, yeah. You got two things. You got Intergalactic. You got we no, work. You got three. You yeah. got, the we work isn't necessarily, but we should talk about it because the marketing is crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of cult marketing, basically. The playlist, and it's not out yet. But when it comes out, the uh, the, the Riri show, you got to support Bad Girl Riri. You need to watch her other two shows, bro. Or has she done threes before? If y'all have not, bro, if y'all consider yourself creative, if you think you're a creative, bro, one. You ain't gonna, you aren't gonna be like 
turned off by somebody else's drama. You can respect that a woman is doing something creative because I know some of y'all do artists be like, I ain't gonna watch no girl shit or whatever. But um, or it's that genre. I don't listen to Riri's music. Dog, her fashion shows are amazing. Yeah, crazy. Amazing. Yeah. And have you so you have you seen one through three? No. Bruh. <laughs> What the hell you talking about there? I've seen like <laughs> you clips. Mean, you seen clips? Yeah. Bro, you got to see this shit, bro. You got to you got to see. It. Her shit is like for real creatively amazing. It can inspire you for how you do your shows, even if it's something you want to do in a music video, like truly it's a it's a real production, bro. Uh, it's, that, it's that's on Netflix too? That's Amazon. Amazon. It's a whole nother app. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty of it though is they use like that to deal with that to also inform like sales on Amazon it's a whole thing right so we're using the content to drive Amazon sales oh okay yeah okay. like they're using data like crazy so her her deal with them is pretty dope we, we'll probably go deeper into that when we talk about that so I getting off subject though you know let's, let's, let's go to the next the next topic uh, does pre-release marketing matter anymore someone asked us that and I, obviously we just talked about Three, three yeah. releases. You know what I'm saying? Like from Taylor Swift and Drake, and then you talk about Billy McFarlane doing this for this this show. Pre-release marketing, one thousand percent matters. But I think what we are experiencing is we're in a space where you also can get amazing results without pre-release marketing. Yeah, because one, we know a song could be out a year, two years before it has its pop moment. So. If it did have a pre-release, it didn't probably have much of an effect um, in regard to that. But two, we see we're in a space where you can have a song on TikTok. You just drop a, a, a snippet and then a the snippet goes so crazy and it has nothing to do with your pre-release. And it's going to be successful as long as you understand how to take that energy and drive it into the song. Yeah. Right. Whether that's about to be a pre-release, but then and that same thing can happen right after you drop the song. So TikTok has like created this space where you don't need a pre-release to find massive success, all right? As a let's let's be real about the size of artists that this applies to as well as well, right? Pre-release marketing actually probably applies a lot less for indie artists. Yeah, hundred percent. Like an indie artist without views, we gotta start putting respect on indie artist name. Taylor Swift is indie, bro. You know what I mean? It's not the you know bad run these indie so. A smaller, a upcoming artist yeah, with a smaller indies. fan base. Yes, <laughs> yes, a, a smaller fan base. Your pre-release marketing probably isn't going to be seen by enough people and experienced mm -hmm. by enough people to actually have an impact anyway. Yeah. Right. So you can't control a narrative and 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 behavior, but you can still do content ahead of time. Yeah. Especially through a platform like TikTok to just test and see interactions to gauge how you're going to go about your full blown marketing once the song comes out. That's one thing. And then two, I mean, we already know like TikTok is is roulette, too, in some ways. Yeah. Right? You might have that massive moment just for from a teaser being posted. But the biggest thing y'all need to do if you drop something ahead of time and it takes off like once you start putting stuff out you better be ready to drop that don't do the the song ain't nowhere near ready and i don't have the ability to complete it like quickly if it takes off because if it takes off and you get a big moment and you don't drop that thing until two months from now because you had to complete the song and didn't know what to do you're gonna lose so much momentum and you cannot buy that momentum i don't care what you think, how much money you think goes into it, the record labels. Record labels have money, but they don't have momentum. They yeah. can give, they can spend money to increase the possibility that momentum occurs, but they can't just buy it and guarantee it. Yeah, There's nothing more valuable than that, and that's why you know, pre-release strategies don't matter as much as they used to, because TikTok has just changed that landscape. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to the the things we said earlier about uh, the three C's, the what was it, creativity, consistency, conversation controversy. slash controversy. So, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like as a smaller artist, like you don't have enough market space to where people even care to see like what your narrative is, unless like the the creative element of it is just so attention grabbing that it becomes like your breakthrough moment. Um, I can't think of a, a specific artist off top, but it's like it, it'd be the M tripling type thing. Exactly, right? yeah, it's a great example. Yeah, so something like that, or like I, I, I was thinking about like Doja Cat move. You know what I'm saying, but I don't think it was pre rollout. Uh, it it wasn't pre rollout, 
No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was yeah. out then. But yeah. that's still a good example of just a narrative that can that that can cause people to care who don't already know about you. Yeah. Because that's what you're getting at. Yeah. A narrative needs to be interesting enough in itself that even people who don't know about you will pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like you got to really, I don't know, I feel like, you know, probably because of resources, a lot of the rising in these fall. So the traditional stuff, I'm going to post a couple snippets. Maybe I'll do a live, a little premiere. You know what I'm saying? And even that works like if you have a small audience, right? Like you just can't expect massive results from it. But I always look at pre-releases are more about more about getting your current fans excited than mm-hmm. gaining new fans when you're a small artist. Once you're a bigger artist, it's it's both really like you are trying to get your current fans excited, but you're trying to create so much of a conversation that new people start paying attention to it as well. Exactly. And so it's it's very hard to have that spillover effect as a small artist because you know it's like there's a hundred people that may well maybe there's a hundred people that care about you and it's great those people you should want those people to care about you but they're not enough they're not enough to spill it over into a bigger conversation unless some lucky shit happens you know what I'm saying so it's like right. I think it's 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 important with the right objective in mind you know what I'm saying no that's a fact and you say something that's really important actually how your pre release is something. That could be used as a vehicle for your current fan base. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't mean you don't need to do it. I typically tend to think about growth yeah. in general, but you could one hundred percent could do a great pre-release and could be a moment in time. So I also think about the experience for fans who are following you in that moment. So they have something to remember the yeah. way you did that pre-release, and then two a cataloging for fans in yes. the future. Yeah. Right. So they yep. can go back and say, Oh snap, that was so dope. I wish I was experiencing it in real time. And make sure I see the next one. Exactly. Yeah. So that is something to do and you can get value from it. But just from the short term thought thinking of, Hey, I'm just trying to make this track do the numbers. Pre-release might not have an impact. And that's actually one of the biggest mistakes. I see a lot of just people in general, like in, in any t- type of marketing, um, but especially artists in this case, they, make the mistake of applying the right marketing tactics to the wrong result. It's like, oh, this didn't give me streams. Well, if you understood what was supposed to be where you were in your your career, this is not going to give you streams. But it is extremely valuable for building that catalog in the future, for creating that relationship with the fans. And I know you can't feel it as much right now, but it is happening. And you have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it's going to explode at some point down the road but when you have that expectation oh man it didn't give me more streams which is what most artists are looking for to start right yeah. you start to devalue things that are actually really valuable behaviors and habits to have just because they don't have that result so yeah. I, I think a lot of artists when I say it that way probably get I don't know they probably start off <laughs> in a weird way better and having a more holistic view of the right type of actions to take but they almost get beaten into becoming the monotonous same type of artist marketers just because it's like yo that didn't give me this result that didn't give me result that cool creative idea that i had didn't give me anything and next thing you know it's like well let me just do this because this is moving the needle forward Mm -hmm. let me create this tiktok video that's copying this exact trend or let me just run this ad of this of this style because they at least give me a number and you just got rid of all the shit that made you unique because they weren't giving you quick enough results yeah it's like a marathon almost you have to have the perseverance to stay you <laughs> until that shit works. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think too is kind of like having the muscle to be strong enough to handle doing all of it at the same time. You know? Oh, that's a whole another thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole another thing because it's yeah. like it's like yeah, all all these things are going to make all the other number driving stuff work better. But I, I think it speaks more too, like artists of like a Taylor Swift caliber, or like a Drake caliber. Like they they're not. I don't. I wouldn't say they don't care about streaming, but I don't mm-hmm. think they care about streaming as much as the rising indie community because they have so many other ways to flip it. It could be like, hey, I could maybe not do, I don't know, X amount of hundreds of millions of streams here, which would be a little bit off brand for me. But this campaign I ran got this whole other industry interested in me and they about to drop a $50 million bag on me to come host an event or put together mm-hmm. some type of thing, right? So kind of like you were saying, like there's a different KPI attached to the campaign result at that level than just streams going up. Because when you Drake, you're 21 Savage, you tell the Swift, 
you know your streams are gonna jump up. Like it's, it's like you don't know how much, maybe, right? That yeah. part is still um I guess unknown, but like you know what's going to happen versus like the smaller rising artists, they don't know if what they do is gonna make the streams go up. So that's all they hyper focus on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the shit didn't make my streams go up. And that kind of goes back to like what I was saying a couple episodes ago, bro. I think it goes back to like how long you think you're going to be in the game. Yep. If you feel like you're not going to be here for long, then you're right. All this shit's a waste of your time. Go ahead, grab the yeah. bag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get what you got to do, build it up, have fun in the moment. But if you feel like you're going to be here for three, five, seven, ten years plus, right, then it, there really is no fail in doing it because you're setting the foundation up for the next mm-hmm. thing to work a little bit better and then the next thing to work a little bit better. And yep. then, boom. Like you say, you pop and you have this whole catalog of experiences that you put people through to make them go, damn, I wish I was there for that. But this next one, I'm going to make sure I stick around for it. You know, like I want to see what he what he or she has coming next. And that's just as important, you know what I'm saying, than like, oh, like your streams went up 30%. You yep. know what I'm saying? Because you you had a successful Instagram ad or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Yep. It's the, it's the brand impact of giving great value every time I interact with your brand. Yeah. It's like, oh. Kanye is going to do another concert. You know, that there's going to be some interesting production value when he goes on tour. Yeah. Right. We saw him do the stage. We saw him do the pyramid with the, uh, what was that? Jesus album. Right. And then yeah. the mask yeah. and all that stuff and Jesus walking down and all that stuff. Right. So you think, Oh, when he does something, you know that it's going to be well thought out. Right. You see that with a Travis, you you see that literally with a YouTuber. Right. It's like, Oh, I really laughed when I watched that video. Next time I see their face pop up, I know it's probably gonna be funny, even if I don't know about the subject that they're talking yeah. about. So I'm just gonna watch it anyway. I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to give yeah. it a chance, and that's called brand equity right there. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go just because it's you. I'm gonna wear this shirt just because you're associated with the shirt, whatever, just because because you gave me that experience. So that's really what you're trying to do as an artist. Like, how can you maximize that impact? But of course, starting off, like you said, can you do it all at once? It is hard. We That's, we that's yeah. part of the game. That's, yeah. that's just I'm not going to deny that. It is hard. But you also touched on artists at a different level, not necessarily caring about streams, but I think it's still caring about success. Yeah. Right? It's like we have to maintain the perception of perception of success in our main thing. All right. So LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, they talk about that, like keep the main thing, the main thing. They know this is the thing that drives how they're seen across in all these other industries. Yeah. All right. So I got to keep winning at basketball. I can't like win 30% of my games season after season. Cause now I'm not looked at LeBron. LeBron's not the goat. He's not this character anymore. Yeah. I got to get to the playoffs. I got to put up these numbers at least, and then make it seem like it's the team's fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to, you know, have a, get another championship because it makes even, uh, and it's funny enough, even though they probably make they're better compensated than many artists, right? When we think about the NBA, still most of their money, just like artists, doesn't come from their main thing. Mm-hmm. The ones who are at the top, right? Because you flip that brand that comes with greatness. It's, it's the brand of greatness. Man, yeah. that's, a, that's a hell of a brand. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you know Tom Brady got like a $300 million contract just to be like a sportscaster yeah. or whatever. It might have been $600 mil. Like It's one of, matter of fact, let me see real quick. Hold up, real quick. It's Damn, it's a hold up, hold up. Tom Brady contract. I don't even think I know uh, what Tom Brady sounds like. What is that? <laughs> what do they call it? Like a sportscaster or something? Yeah, a sports broadcaster. Oh, a sportscaster. Uh, 10 year deal for 375, right? And he gets this deal before he even retires. Before he even retires. Why? Because people just know hey, I'm going to have the GOAT on my station. All right? I know I'm going to be able to flip that somehow. Yeah. I just need the rights. Right? So a hell of a lot of t-shirts. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, facts. So yeah, the brand of greatness, man, is uh is is, is very interesting though. Um, and, and so like you said, it's like yeah, I care about streams, direct fans, and building that fan base, kind of come up. And then I, if I get there at the top, hey, some of these streams can be fake for all I care. Mm-hmm. I just need the perception to be that I am successful and I'm one of the one of the people on that level, whatever that level is for that perceived artist. It's like I gotta keep, maintain that image. Yeah, and that's all it is. Which is, you know, it's a different game. Sounds like the same game, but it's a, it's, a, it's a totally different game. Yeah. 
Two completely different muscles. Hey, for real. Now, we got to flip into some advice. One of my favorite parts about... <laughs> giving advice. <laughs> Not giving advice, showing <laughs> advice. That's the part right there. Showing advice. You know, other people saying the things that we know are valuable. Key, 24-1 Savages manager, uh, as you mentioned her earlier. No, you mentioned 21 earlier. She dropped some gems, as she often does on Twitter. But this is actually a video. It's probably the first video I've seen her giving advice like, like this. Yeah, she actually. don't do a lot of video content. I think she got a couple yeah. podcast interviews yeah. out, but it's not, it's not a lot, let's, for sure. Let's check this out. Oh, come on, man. Y'all get really, really involved and hands-on with every artist that I work with. But if I see the energy is not matched, then it's like, okay, this is probably not a situation that's going to work for me because I'm not going to out outwork you. And so at some point, you just have to like kind of weigh the pros and cons. Like, okay, is this worth my energy? Is this worth my time? Is this serving me? Is this along my journey too? Because sometimes you'll just be working on something that's not even aligned with where you want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. That comes with just experience and learning things and, and falling and, mista and making mistakes. All right, I'm gonna play that, hold up. I'm, I'm gonna throw another one in here because I feel like they're so related. They're so related. Check this out as well from La Russell. Uh, I don't know why starting to mute check this out here tietta t is over ah! here so man i met tietta last year and uh i had about three thousand followers we currently sit at like we currently sit at about five hundred thousand in a year's time tietta has came in and been uh, a right hand and a backbone she's helped me Shit. grow my whole business and brand by a million times multiple yeah. from just work she works like Ain't nobody work hard as me except T. Like, she just enabled me Come to be on. more artists, right? And to be able to really focus on my craft and cultivating these experiences and every idea I've had with the selling stocks, selling gold cards, doing our own shows, creating. She, she created all these forms to execute them. You know, and um, T, 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 you, T you doing independent incredible. work, T? You doing outside work? She got one artist at a <laughs> time. So you oversee, he, you the nigga he talking about. And, and, you just and, 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 hey, to steal and, his work. And she, <laughs> own, and she own equity in everything she's ever touched. That's, That's dope. Right. That's over 100 pieces of songs, content, music, everything she's touched, she own equity in. Congratulations, have, T. Have you seen any of the return yet? Have you starting to see the return? For certain. It, the distro it, account it, coming in. Yeah. <laughs> it's changing your life. Yeah, that's because that's he a new jacket. Retire. You didn't, you didn't have that jacket. All right, looking at those two back to back. <laughs> what's the first? I, I want to let you go first, man. What, what's the first thing you think? The time aspect, like working on the thing you want to be there long term. Actually, I think that's a good point. That's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> I just want to know what you think. I, I'm not trying to lead you, man. I thought so, you were trying to, yeah, okay. See, whatever, you know, whatever speaks to you, man. Whatever God drops on your soul, man. No, nah, yeah, that's what I was like. I, I thought I was missing something. <laughs> nah, first, nah, but, nah, nah. But, nah, I mean, the, the key clip initially, I think, is just, you know, going back to the old adage of, like, I don't want to work with somebody that I'm working harder than, especially an artist, bro, because, you know, we've seen it. There are so many things that, that the artist needs to do to make what you do be successful and there's nothing you can do about it if they don't do those mm -hmm. things, right? Like with us in marketing, like, hey, we need pieces of content for this. I can't get up and go make it for you. I can't be you. So if you don't do it, I have the drive to create certain things, man, you know, pretty much about to be wasting your time coming up <laughs> coming up here and doing something with us. There's not much we can do for you, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that's just like that being reinforced. But the part that she said that really stood out to me was the, like, yo, are you working on something that you don't even care to do in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years? The only part that I would semi-disagree with is just because we're in music and there's no like real path to go through things to get experience. Sometimes you have to work on things that you may not see yourself doing in a couple of years because it will give you the experience or connection to be that's true what that's you true. want to do so that's yeah. the one point was like it, it's right. very hard like like for us now like who's to say in 10 years we don't want to do marketing anymore like we don't know that right now you know what i'm saying yeah. but maybe we don't we feel that way like around year nine we're like damn i don't want to do that shit next year right but there's no way i can know that now but i know that if i do feel that way eight nine ten years whatever experiences we got through doing the marketing thing will probably carry over into it right and we'll, right. Be, able, we'll be able to build off so that's the one part of it i kind of was like eh, about but like Everything else, I feel like was dope. Now there's the Russell clip. This is Russell clip. Uh -huh. It's the Russell clip. It's really beautiful. <laughs> because one, one, just the story of hey, I was at three thousand followers when this person that literally changed my life came into my life to help me. Because her clips, 
that she was making for him is the reason he started going viral on TikTok. And I don't know. So now it's her who's putting him on? Because I know he, I mean, he still doesn't really have a TikTok, right? Well, they have like a no? company page. Like they have the good company page. Right, which right, I think right, it's like right. his brand. So he just posts all his videos on there. He doesn't have like a little Russell page. I don't right. Think. But that whole like style of like the vintage looking, you know what I'm saying, video clip with the bright yellow phone. Like that was her making it. Because mm-hmm. the only way, only reason I knew that is because I remember the first time I found him was through a viral TikTok of him rapping, I think, um, one of his one of his earlier songs. And then he had another clip where the same song that was going viral, she comes into the camera and she's rapping it. And like it's just a video of like her rapping his verse on the on the on the um on camera. And then he comes in at the end of the video, takes the mic from her and finishes. And that was probably like one of his earlier viral videos too. Right, because she just, has poetry or something like that. Yeah, it's like poetry, writer and stuff. And I just remember seeing her tag, I'm like, man, who's this? And I go to her page and I look at her page and she's using a lot of the same fonts and like colors and styling that she that his post has. So I'm like, oh, this must be the person behind like her post. I mean, his post, right? Like putting it together. And then, you know, more information comes out. He talks a little bit more and it's like, yeah, this is the person pretty much driving my crib direction. So it's like, one, he was able to find somebody with that type of eye and skill set super early on. I can't imagine that at 3,000 followers, he had a lot of leverage to, to, to get her to do it for free. Right. She probably just saw the vision, like, hey, I fuck with you. Maybe they were friends or something. I don't know too much of their, their background, but probably your friends or, you know what I'm saying, good acquaintance or something like that. But it's like, hey, I have this thing that you believe in. You have this skill set that could believe that could um, benefit this thing I believe in. Is there any way that we can bring these two worlds together and make magic happen? And, mm-hmm. you know, they did. Like he said, like, he found an agreement giving her equity and everything, I feel like it's unheard of, especially for like, I'm I'm thinking her role probably technically would be like creative director or something like that. I'll, yep. I'll be thinking, I don't know if creative directors typically get equity in the stuff they work yeah, on. Yeah, because she's not technically a manager to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't think so. To my knowledge. But, I mean, now you have to think about it. We talk about artists trying to see themselves as companies more and more, mm-hmm. right? As you grow, as the industry evolves. So with company comes equity. Yeah. Like as a real conversation, I'm not saying just go divvy out F- equity to everybody. Yeah. You know, they got to deserve it. it has to be strategic, it has to make sense. But that's a real conversation now. Yeah. All right. So it could be everybody in your team, just like you have companies where literally every single one of their employees has the ability to have some level of stock within yeah. the company. There's some companies that are like that. Right. Do you want to be that type of company or is it just a certain, you know, amount of people who you interact with and then everybody else is a contractor or you have people who work for you, but they have other forms of compensation and work days and all that stuff. If yeah. you think about yourself that way, what is the culture that you want to build with your organization your team yeah. right around you and i think that's something that a lot of artists aren't doing yet and la russell you know he's been i mean he's been moving different in a lot of ways that i appreciate and this is one of them just not even fully off of understanding how he's looking at his company but just off of the relationship right you can appreciate yo, mm-hmm. this person's giving me value and i'm going to give them a real return a piece mm-hmm. i don't know what that might look it could be Point oh 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 oh. I don't know what that is, right? She yeah. seems happy though. That's yeah. <laughs> you know from what I can tell from afar. So, like that's a real conversation. And you take key, all right? Talking long term, all right? You want to be a part of something that you can see long term, and then you com- combine that with artists looking at themselves as a company. Now, do you want to? Your goal should be right to find people who want to be a- on for the long haul. But does that mean that artists should be looking for CEOs and chief of marketing, marketing, you know, um, I don't know, chief of operations, whatever, right? Like looking for those people as positions and not just trying to hire a intern, right? To get a little work done, right? Not just to hire, oh shoot, even a marketer just for the sake of marketing, yeah. right? Like, you can have, there's a difference between hiring a marketer. Obviously we have an agency, right? And it might sound like, hey, we giving advice against us. But like if if you have a marketer on your team, especially as you grow, you still might work with agencies, right? There's a lot of these companies that have their own marketing organizations, whether it's in, inside music or out. They have like the labels, they still hire us, yeah, right? For multiple reasons, maybe you have somebody who's really strategic and they can handle all the rollout, rollout like a product manager, right? 
but they you, they still need other people to execute. Yeah. Right. So you still might want to find somebody who has that strong vision and the ability to understand marketing at depth. Right. Uh, like, but that means you got to see that person as long term. You should be looking for those pieces in your team of somebody who can think that way. And then, yeah, you might fill out the the work and the execution, the deliverables with a third party. But I think a lot of people are just trying to third party their way through everything. Mm -hmm. And now you got to charge. You, got, you get charged every time you want to move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you do this work, but you can't you don't have any like insight and or, um, or data or anybody who's been trained. So if you think about it like this. Even if you're working with a marketer, right, a music marketer that's technically not on your team, like you're working with us. We know when we work with our clients time and time again, we begin to get to the point where we look at them like their own pages. We keep up with them naturally mm -hmm. and we'll just send them over ideas just because because we've built that relationship or we we can't stop our mind from seeing the connection and thinking of ideas. Yeah. Right. And now we know the history. We understand your goals more. So at least if you could find somebody to work long term with, there's extreme value there. Right. Because the cost of training is very high like we know that when you hire somebody we hire somebody in take three months six months maybe to get somebody to be cold at what they do yeah. and every time you work with somebody new yeah they might be well trained in what they do but they're not necessarily well trained in doing it for you yeah in your system it's in your system and your personality the things that you like your style of content the shit that you you're comfortable with the shit you're uncomfortable with but you still need to be pushed on and the stuff that you're uncomfortable with but it really needs to be like nah this ain't me yeah. like i don't wear dresses or i don't you know what i mean or i don't do funny stuff i'm a yeah. chill personality or i or i got I, I love the money phone man like i, I gotta keep <laughs> doing it whatever it is for you like the team gets to know that right yeah. and we can make recommendations right and that's the same thing goes with your internal but also how you move external so um i think it's really important for like this type of stuff what russell's doing man like yeah. find those people outside of your manager that can be long term too yeah and, and i think it speaks a lot too to have like this person because going back to the equity thing right like the 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 beautiful part of finding someone that's willing to take the equity is one you probably don't have to put up too much money in the beginning right maybe money to make sure they have like the equipment and things to do their job for you yeah but then two it, incre it creates this incentive for them to work just as hard as you are because now like every win you get every w you get right every you know every time you level up they also level up because they get a percentage of it right so it's like like i said maybe it's, we don't know two percent whatever in the first year is two percent of a thousand dollars but then five years later, it's two percent of five million, and then ten like, years later, it's two percent, you know, twenty million. Right? And so, like, so they're incentivized to continue helping you and building you out because they literally see that result come down to you. Versus like, you know, someone like us, like we talked about before, it's like, but we could take an artist from zero to ten million streams, and like, you know, all we got was whatever we charged them for in the beginning, right? Like, there's yep. no, there's no real like extra incentive beyond like just doing a good job and your reputation and things like that, which are important. But like going back to what you said. Like there's there's a, a very strategic long term value in having a person that is very invested in your success. Mm -hmm. Like outside of just like, you know, like keep taking us like we're invested in your success within the campaign window. Right. So if you hire us for six months, for six months, and you know, if we like you enough, of course, even beyond that, like we still want you to win, but like we're invested in your success during the time we were contracted for. Versus this person on your team that is only eating when you eat. They invest in that shit twenty four seven, but they going to mm -hmm. sleep, waking up, thinking about, damn, how can I get do lit, right? How can I, how can I, man, that last post only got a thousand views and the twelve percent watch time, right? How can I get that up for him, right? Like, how can we, can, how can we get yep. that going? And like, it, it creates, I think, a level of like hustle in the people that work work for you that sometimes just like paying them out right just was doesn't do, right? You know? And I think I even think sometimes like one of the the biggest lessons that like, we probably learned as like agency owners is like learning like what incentivizes your employees and what incentivizes your people, right? Mm -hmm. Like we talk about some people are incentivized by status. So you work for me for a year, at the end of that shit, you're gonna be you gonna be litty, bro. Everybody in the industry gonna know who you yep. are, right? You you incentivize the status or a lot of people are money incentivized. Hey, I can pay you this much. This year, next year it increases this much. 
whatever the year after that is an increase to this much. Some people are incentivized by freedom. Hey, yep. bro, you can do this shit from wherever you at. I don't care if you in, in Miami, you know what I'm saying, getting drunk on the beach. Just get this shit done by 1 o'clock. You get this shit done by 1, you can do whatever you want to do for the rest mm-hmm. of the day, right? And then there's probably like other small things that people are those incentivized are, by. Those are definitely the main three, though. Yeah, it's always main the main three. Main three. So it's like the the bigger point, I think, that even kind of comes from his situation, even outside of just equity, is like you're finding these people that are that you think could really benefit you. And you don't have the infrastructure or the money you have to like just pay them out right. It's like figure out what else is important to them that maybe you can provide. Cause I'm pretty sure like outside of just the money aspect to it, like you said, like I, I want to say she's like T's like a writer or she has like other creative aspirations. Mm-hmm. Then she has this crazy case study of an artist that she like he just said it, but she took me from three thousand followers to half a million in a year's time. She could probably go to any other artist or creative person mm-hmm. right now. She wanted to build out an agency. Build out an agency, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and have things going for herself because she has the, the working proof that she can do it. Yep. And so it's like I don't, I wouldn't say that, you know, I don't know, we don't know their back end conversations of like that's what maybe he promised to her, but I'm pretty sure at some point she thought that, you know what I'm saying, especially when shit really started moving. Like, damn, if I get him lit, not yep. only do I get what he promised me, but like, but I can, I can talk about this and I can tell yep. people this was me. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's like the fourth thing, and in many ways, it's a culmination of those things, mm-hmm. but it's career. Yeah. Right. You got those people who truly say, I want to be in this industry. So I'm willing to one, do work that might not be for pay as much because I find value in this industry. I'm just happier working in this versus, I don't know, working at UPS or something. Yeah. Right. Even if it's three times the amount of money. And then on top of that, it's like, I understand this is a case study for the future of my career, mm-hmm. like you said, right? Whether that's my own independent agency or when I, if I want to go into the system, right? Yeah. Work somewhere at a label and I can say, well, I worked with X, Y, and Z artists, right? Or, well, if you're an artist yourself, right? You just, I work with this artist, but then it's on you to be successful. But of course, of course, they want you to be as successful as possible because then they can say they work with you. Yeah. So, like, that's all, that's all it is. It comes down to exactly what you said. Uh, what speaks to somebody? What are their motivations? Mm-hmm. And now you got your company, right? Going back full circle, we talk about hiring, the way you look at your team, how you motivate them, whether it's equity, whether it's understanding these other personal behaviors they have. But if you want to take on this whole, this true mindset of I, I'm independent, you got to say, all right, that means I have a company. And if I have a company, oh shit, I'm the CEO, or I'm at least the board of directors, you know what I mean? Somewhere in the C-suite. What does that mean? That comes with additional responsibility, and I feel like a lot of people, they like that idea, right? If I'm an owner, I'm a boss, but they don't want any of that stuff that comes with it. That shit is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what nobody says. It's, it's, nah. It's it, a job, but it ain't fun. <laughs> It's, uh, the end result, right, is the most fun part and freedom. Yeah. Like, there's some personality things that it might speak to, but the nuances are not fun at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sitting down, paying payroll ain't fun. Paying taxes ain't fun. <laughs> Every time something don't click, it's like, like, damn, you really don't. I got to figure out how to make you get this. I, I got to figure out how to <laughs> translate this knowledge in my head to make you understand. Or you're going to go find somebody new and start from scratch, right? Yeah. It's, it's a risk. That's, Both of us suck. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> We're not even going. <laughs> We're not going to even get into that. That'll, that'll be like a special episode, so y'all can be ready. We, we can do a deep dive in, in thinking about just team, uh, you know, company ownership. That is, that's. <laughs> uh, yeah, you speaking to me, bro? All right, see where you going. Let's bring up this next topic, though. Rest took over the Egypts. No, <laughs> Rest took over the pyramids of Egypt. I just put, show this quick little clip. All right, the audio is less important though. The point is he took over the pyramids of Egypt. He did a performance right in front of the pyramids. It's a great, great look. Just the the scenery of it, that image of it. And there's so many things that I like about it, right? I think they said technically like he was like the first artist, right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere, I don't know where that was. Yeah, I saw it on some clip. Yeah, he was like the first artist to, to take over the pyramids of Egypt. And one, being the first is valuable. There's a narrative there. Yeah. Right. And yo, there's probably so many places in the world that you could just be the first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Russ isn't the biggest artist in the world. We know that 
there's many artists that if they wanted to, they could have done this and yeah. been the first. Yeah. Right. So I don't, Hey, are you going to do it in front of Niagara Falls? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like we're eighth wonders, 100th wonders. There's so many places that you can do a concert. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think he has the benefit of having a fan base that's there too, right? which is different. The way he came up, like he actually had like Liberia, Egypt, and uh, somewhere in some places in the Middle East. Like some of them actually, because of his look, actually, I remember talking to a guy, they thought that he was one of them. I think it was like Persia or something. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. He actually <laughs> finessed and leaned into it for a second rest, apparently, because the guy was kind of salty when he was <laughs> when he was talking about it or whatever. But um, like being the first is a huge advantage so that goes back to creativity right mm -hmm. we, we keep talking about being creative uh, being creative so you have this narrative of being the first and whatever this is right that ma that makes it matter instantly more but then just the image though mm -hmm. it's a dope image and as an artist you know it's one of those things that begins to sound narcissistic when you think about artists um talking and their legacy and how they're going to be seen in the future but truly, if you think, man, this is going to be a great look, me in front of some pyramids and that image lasting, like... That shit iconic. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great image. So you have to think about, like, how can I put myself in a position to look uh, great? Just, yeah. just like we do the camera angles and it'll be nobody at the club, but it looks lit because we did the right camera yeah, angle. Put on the right 20 people. It's the same <laughs> game at scale. That's all it is, right? So how can you find a position and give yourself a good look, man? I think this is this is that to a T. Like Russ, Russ killed this one. I don't know who gave him that idea. Yeah, and it's such a unique first too because like who would have thought to do that? I mean, it's like other That's than Russ saying. apparently. And it's cool because like the whole first thing can always branch because like, all right, Russ, you know, first artist in the pyramids and I don't know, some artist comes along, hey, now you're the first black artist to do a show at the pyramids and then you know yep. two years later now you're the first latino artist to do it wrong you're the first country like so many different ways you can branch the whole first conversation yep they like i like it because it's like man he looked outside of just like regular music first you know what i'm saying uh, or even just i think a lot of music artists focus more on like breaking records and being the first a lot of the time you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. i guess at this point it's, it's only it's probably perceived like there's only so many firsts you can do now like that right very slim we can break some shit that somebody already did. See, but, but that's like, when you're looking inside that box, though. Yeah. Right? Because if you're looking at stadiums and all them type of things, yeah. which was a really, you know, a thing. Oh, I'm the first artist to perform in Madison Square Garden. I feel like like when Jay-Z performed in Madison Square Garden, it was a big deal for some reason. I think he was the first rapper? Something. It was, it was something like that, right? But, <laughs> yeah. But, oh, wait. Let me just look outside of these pre-established venues. Yeah. All right? And now it's easy to be the first and the easy to be the biggest concert, right? Because I'm yeah. the only concert. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. We're in a world where it's a lot cheaper to do stuff like that than it used to. This probably would have been, I mean, you know, this is probably still pretty expensive because it's rushing the concert or whatever. But, you know, getting your own team together, you can get in different locations and have high quality videos and moments for way cheaper yeah. than you used to. Yeah, and cause of, I would say because of technology too, like we, we get a lot of first kind of thrown at us because Remember when NFTs and like the whole metaverse thing first kicked off, but it was a lot of those headlines. Such and such artist is the first artist to sell an NFT. Such and such oh, artist yeah. is the first rapper to sell an NFT. It's the first artist. Right now, they like the mainstream industry took advantage of that to just like build out. We were working with an artist that was trying to do the whole, I'm the first to do this thing in this yes. space. You that shit saying? gets annoying too. Yeah. <laughs> From the marketer side, I must say. <sighs> Y'all, so the first, while we say what we're saying, right? The first doesn't always have value. Yeah. Right? Like, it has to be done in a way that people care. Right? And, all right, I'll actually say this. If you get people to be aware, people will care and remember it. It's something that sticks. But a lot of times, people think being the first is going to create the attention. Yeah. And that's not necessarily so. If people don't care yet, because you're the first one to do it. <laughs> exactly. Which shows that no, nobody was checking for that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But he just let us know, oh, I found this, like, this Hello Yasin shit. And I don't know if he, I, he probably got paid for that. You know, he probably got paid and posted this. Mm, him? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. If, you look, if you look at this, I don't know, this, this is very, 
this is very I get paid for post format. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I'm only gonna say yes because That's I'm it. suspicious of everything. Look at this. It's no way my page will look like this, and I'm not getting paid for post. <laughs> like this is just this is that this is that, and then he has the the rest of the. Uh, the the platform on YouTube and all that stuff. Yeah. Nah. I mean, now he might not have gotten paid for this, but if he's not getting paid for post, come on, nah, nah. I, I, I it's no way. The way he, I've seen him move, I don't know everything about. And I don't know too because he's a he's a Rush fan. Like on his channel, he talks about being a Rush fan, and like I think like it's like DJ Academics. Like DJ Academics admits that he gets paid by most labels, but like he also posts okay things that he knows is gonna get him attention. So I could I could I could kind of see that same route. Okay, like, you know what that means? He's a Russ fan, and Russ is smart. We know that Russ was smart, yeah, yeah. and he pays attention to these <laughs> types of things more than most artists because he's not so reliant on labels. Yeah, right. So this type of independent outlet matters, which means with his platform. Hello, y'all scenes. And all of y'all should take note on something like this. I don't know if it's actually true, but like if I was Russ, right, and Hello, y'all scene was a fan of mine with I'm the level, out. with a yellow platform, yeah. yes, I would actually talk yeah. to him at some yeah, point. I'm reaching out. Yeah, I'm I'm reaching out. We yeah. would have a relationship because he's third party. He's not within the mix, right? He's mm -hmm. not in the group, which means I can get direct access, probably not be overcharged or just worried about all these gatekeepers, favors, and all those additional things. Mm -hmm. And somebody like Yasin will get a great look from being connected to me. There's a lot of value to that. Maybe one day we do a real interview at the very least. He has access to somebody, the type of person that he normally doesn't have access to being mm -hmm. a third party because people don't respect those. Like, there's no way. So, again, if he didn't get paid for this, he did it off a of relationship sake. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I can see that. Like, because I don't even know if I saw any other page talking about that. So, I could see him being like, hey, hey, bro, I fuck with you. Here go to school. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Break this. Cause I don't want to go to these academics. I don't want to go whatever. But I said I'll have to look more into that to see that before I stand on that. But I don't think I saw it anywhere else. I I did not see it anywhere else to yeah. be real. You know, again, do people care? Yeah, that's true. You know, do people care? So you have to make a lot of people aware for them to truly care. Cause it is something really dope. I think a lot of people would like. It's an image you are not gonna forget. Yeah. So that's the thing. So to hear something and then follow it up with an image like that. Oh yeah, like it'll be drawn in people's mind. A lot of people who don't even know who Russ is would be like, "Oh yeah, that was that rapper who performed in Egypt." Yeah, right? exactly. Like, but that's it, something to remember. It creates like a random fun fact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like because you see it and you like, damn, was he the first person to perform in right. Egypt? And you googling it, you looking it up, trying to, say, damn man, he was the first person right. over there, bro. That right there, crazy. Bro. fun fact. Yeah, that's like the. <laughs> Another way to think yeah. about the value of narratives. If your narrative can become at least a fun fact to people who don't care about you, yeah, that means that thing is going to stick. There's yeah. some power in that narrative because, again, a narrative is nothing but a thought. It's a meme. And your goal is to get people to know one thing about you and then get them to know another thing. So that person who didn't care about you and don't know much about you, they, can, they know that one thing you performed in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But next time, they see, oh, wait, what? The, the rapper who performed in Egypt, the first rapper to perform in Egypt, came out with a song. Yeah. Hmm. I remember that. Let me check out that, because yeah. now I know him in some sense. Let yeah. me let me see. I like the song. Oh, snap. Now I know one thing about him, and I like a song. And then you hear a third loop. Yeah. That song, and the rapper, and, and this, oh, this is the same guy who performed in Egypt, and then, I don't know, he punches Quando Rondo. That was a real big, right? No, that wasn't Quando Rondo. It was uh, Smoke Perk. No, it wasn't Smoke Perk. It was somebody else. It was, uh, uh, we're going to say Quando Rondo, even though that's not a fact for the sake of example, <laughs> right? So, you know, the rapper in Egypt just punched Quando Rondo and, um, fourth out, Guap Dad. Oh, okay, yeah. Guap yeah, Dad. Yeah. They had a little fight. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was, yeah, right? That, yeah. So now you got three facts about this person. Me, 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 right? Oh, yeah. that person collaborated. So you can go any direction, right? It could be, oh, you collaborated with this, or you get or you could just get people to know three of your songs and love three of your songs. They love four of your songs. But these side narratives help just as much and help bring attention to more of your songs. It's really the the step by step version of what you're trying to accomplish that we talked about last time is creating a brand that that people love enough 
to give you another chance. Mm -hmm. All right. I like you. And because I know so much about you, I'm going to see what's happening. Right. If your brother like drop some music, you'd be like, all right, that shit was trash. <laughs> you know, and then he dropped another song. You probably check out the next one <laughs> enough. Right. And then, okay, you might start ignoring it. I was like, all right, I'm not going to listen to every single one because, like, you you feeling pretty bad. <laughs> but if you finally, one finally, tight, you know, starts to hit a little bit, you're like, all right, little bro, what kind of good? <laughs> Something happening. And you're going to want him to win. You're going to want him to win eventually. But you also going to, you know, not give clout where, where, <laughs> where it's not due. <laughs> That's all we're saying. <laughs> I'm all about not to earn the support. You're gonna, you're gonna, have, you're gonna to have, have to earn, earn it. it. You're gonna have to earn it. You gonna want it for him, but you ain't, but you ain't gonna give it easy, right? Yeah, maybe up until like song. If he, it depends on how many in a row are bad, you know. Because I see potential <laughs> in one. Like, okay, this isn't great, but like, all right, I see where you potential. Where you at with it, little bro? If it's just like five, just like, mm, no, nah, you gotta stop, man. Like, <laughs> around number five, I'm like, hey, little bro, look, I want you to know. The other paths in the music industry. Everybody doesn't have to be a rapper. Hey, <laughs> everybody don't have to be a fat rapper. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, and now, we, speaking of rappers, um, I can't play this without first saying "R.I.P. Take Off." Uh, very, you know, very, very unfortunate, crazy. You know, just being from Atlanta. Uh, and Jacory, if you Jacory, the outskirts of Atlanta. <laughs> I, I was, no, that's not. I was in high school when I started popping up. Yeah, uh, like just uh, definitely RIP. Uh, very unfortunate. Big loss to the city. And man, it's they won me over. By the way, that's like you know, first when I first heard Amigo, you know, yeah, just like I don't know, where we gonna go with this. But then they won me over. And those are usually the people I like the most. The ones who win me over versus the ones I like when I first hear them. Yeah, bro, I didn't realize how much I was. Raised by the Migos, I thought I was like, man, they were—they've been around since I was in like tenth grade, like ninth or tenth grade. Like, I, I, re I literally can remember the very first time I ever heard the Migos song. I was in the backseat of one of my friends' car, and he played the like the early demo version of Versace that you really only knew if he yeah. was in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? It's the first yeah. time I ever heard him. Like maybe like months later, like the Drake thing happened. But like I remember seeing him at Mansion in Lund. I remember them in this. Damn, I, can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. Right? I can't remember who the artist was. But there was this one Atlanta rapper. That back in the day put out this long ass music video that had like every pop in Atlanta rapper on it at the time. And like they were in it. And I didn't even, I think, I think it might have been a, either a Sorry the Kid or maybe a Slim Duncan. I don't remember song that. Song or something. I, I have to find it. It's called like like 300 Spartans or something like that. It's like literally like it's like Migos, Rich Homie Coins, Sorry, Trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like all the like the Atlanta rappers at that time are coming like Trinidad James. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, that video's from a long ass time ago. I was like, I didn't even realize they was like, I was, I was like, damn, bro, I was yeah, raised yeah, by the Migos, yeah. bro. Like, this is crazy. Like, they've no been way. here damn near my whole young adult to adult existence. I actually think I might remember that video now. Yeah. Say, dang. Yeah, bro. Dang. Okay, well, look, all right, I'm, I'm going to move to this clip. I could, <laughs> we, could, we could talk about them forever, actually, because you're about to take me back. But um, <laughs> this video is just about finesse, but we're going to flip it into marketing because everything's marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Now we trying to get richer. You got to like, like a real family. It's different. Yeah. When you walk in there, they don't I'm even like, want to say you know what. They act like they don't got no watches. Mm. But you got to like, you got to know shit when you walk in there. Yeah, you, you know, know let's be you clear. You Just like with Ferrari. Ferrari. I walked in Richard to get the in today. The guy goes to me, oh, you must have connects. Yeah. When I knew I had to connect, and he said, he said, he said to me, in order to get on our list, you got to buy three ladies' watches. Exactly. Before you can. So you got to buy... What if I ain't got a lady? Exactly. <laughs> I go to Richard, Red Rolling. Rolling. We go to Red Rolling. Now, let me let me tell you why this thing is is genius. It, it's genius on so many levels. First of all, playing hard to get, we know, is just a common, you know, common marketing strategy. Exclusivity. Man. Hard to get. Yeah, exclusivity. This thing don't get thrown out of anybody. Any can't can't just anybody touch touch it. You know what I mean? That was my yeah. I was thinking something else, but <laughs> the so it's great for exclusivity, cool, hard to get, and then you know obviously if you add a little luxury, the aspirational brand mm -hmm. to it. But the sauce, the biggest sauce that is twofold. Number one, they said you have to buy three 
to be able to get it. You got you got to get on a list. Saying we have a list already says, mm, oh, okay, you got a list. Yeah, but you gotta man. buy you gotta buy three to be able to get that thing. All right, yeah. that, that 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 nice men's piece that is equivalent to the shit the other dudes are flexing. Yeah. Okay, so you already got to give me more money just to give me money. Yeah, I, I turned it into a prize. I gamified. All right, getting my the 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 my peak product, right? Yeah. But then these fools said you got to get three ladies watches. Like like Nori said, what if I don't even got no lady? Yeah. Still, hey, go find them. <laughs> you got to get three ladies watches, right? Now, what do we know about women? I like spending money. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I ain't trying to get you in trouble. <laughs> that is not what we do about. <laughs> I threw the alley at the wrong basket. My... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was going for <laughs> them as consumers and them as being drivers in the marketplace of yeah. a brand's value. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was gonna be my second guess. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, we know that they're gonna put it out there, heavy, right? And then there's a sense I can even see a lady be like, "Man, like, you know, he got me some Richards. How come like my friends got Richards? Mm-hmm. How come you don't got me a Richard? Right? Yeah. And then you also create a club faster. Yeah. Right? Because now you don't just do one purchase. It's multiple. So it's one thing if I said, oh, you got to get four, but I might keep all four to myself. Yeah. But dang, I'm not going to wear the women's watch, so I'm going to get them. So now I'm spreading the love to at least one other person. Yeah. Right? And you start to build community that way too. Yeah. Right? There's, there's just all these little nuances, man. You could really break that down. But like one, gamifying it, exclusivity, and then finding a way to leverage women, which we know are the primary influencer in most market spaces easy 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 because like but i'm but i'm marketing the males it's it's a crazy and we know what male like males what they get from women the gas the power and it's it's kind of a flex too it's like oh shoot you kind of put me in a good position and this i don't even think they thought of this but i always look for brand experiences right so no I didn't want to buy a woman a watch just for me to get my Richard, right? However, you made me do it. The experience that I got when I gave that woman a watch, though, damn, I fuck with this brand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I now have a memory, a good positive <laughs> feeling for this. So I'm getting equity beyond that last prize, which is the watch that I came for in the first place. There, there's, there's so many ways to slice that stuff, man. And if you can figure out how you can build narrative story or just different experience around your product, especially for artists, like this is obviously a watch, but when you can offer actual product, which I think more and more artists are going to be doing beyond their music and create an experience like that around it. So it starts to feel like a community. Yeah, man. Like that, that's what I love about this, right? That's really? what I love about it's this. It's basically a paid referral program. It's a paid referral program. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> give me some money so you have the right to give me some more. Yeah, which is crazy because now it's thinking about it, it's like, man, if you see somebody with it, you know, by now knowing, like, oh, they went through that process, like, you really got money. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm. You didn't just, you weren't able to just afford that. You afforded it for, like you said, at least one other person, possibly up to four. You know what I'm saying? Depending I think on the you life really, you live. Bro, you just nailed it. Yeah. Because that scene is that type of watch yeah that's why it's in the records and stuff yeah and imagine being somebody who knows right in general like and you're like man they really got money that they're they went through that process but imagine like when you first see the flex and you start to hear about it like dang i want a richard like i see these people the richards those are kind of hot and then you just go unknowingly and you hit that experience Yep. And you're like, dang, they did that? Yep. To get that? <laughs> this is what it's like? So then you, your mind gets blown. But I've gone to to places and I expect to pay $5 and they'd be like $10. And 
And I'm like, yeah, nah, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> it's, it's not even they don't have the money. Sometimes it's just the expectations. Like, I expected to pay $5. I wasn't ready for $10. Let me come back in like a few with, days. With a $10 mentality. Yeah, with a $10. I wasn't ready for that yet. You know what I mean? I remember I went to a place that, and I had been wanting to go for a minute. And I was with my, my, uh, my girl, and we pulled up. And then they had valet and all this stuff. And that, and that was the only way to get in. I wasn't ready for valet. I wasn't in that mindset for a place that was only ready for valet. I could only do that. I just wasn't in that mindset. So I was like, nah, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. And you know, I went back. It's not like I couldn't or I can't afford it. Even at that point, it's just that that gap. It changes how you see everything. Yeah. Right? It changes your perspective. So like, if I walked in for a richer and it was like, dang, I came in for one, but I got to buy four, basically. Yeah. Total? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think too it, it kind of speaks on like the overall experience, right? It's like they, I don't know, man. I don't know if they thought of it this way. If it's a part of psychology, but it's like we're gonna start you off with like these two barriers of negative, um, negative experiences, right? First one being you got to find out, you got to have the connections to get this shit, which is mm. probably pain. Then you calling around, talking to people, trying to see who in your circle can get me onto this wait list, right? And you got to wait, and then you do all that waiting just to find out. Damn, I got about three of these to get one, right? So like you have the back to back to back negative experiences for it to end with, like you said, one, you probably had a positive experience having to give it to the women you had to give it to. Even if it's, you know, like like platonic, like you gave it to your mom or something. Like mm -hmm. your mom's response to it is probably gonna be crazy, right? Yeah. And then you walk away that with the ultimate benefit of it, the status symbol, you know what I'm saying? So it's like at the end you feel like, like you you fought this journey, you know what I'm saying? You hiked this mountain and now you were at the top and it was all worth it, right? You don't even remember or even care anymore about like, then I was on this wait list for X amount of months. And I had to call 50 people just to get connected to this random dude in, in New York or whatever that could get me on. Damn, I just had to drop however much, uh, you know what I'm saying, tens of thousands of dollars, but because uh, like, they push you to the, the, the positive point. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. they got you there. It's like a horror house almost. Like, you scared all the way in the end. <laughs> you go through the gift shop, you get a cool t-shirt. You're like, man, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? It was terrible while I was in it, but that shit was fun. Like, like, what? <laughs> was it? Was it really fun? It'd be like that with my daughter sometimes. I'm like, dang, man, she sure don't look like she enjoying this. And then in the night, she's like, oh, and somebody would be like, oh, how was it? And she was like, that was fun. I was like, you had fun? I did, I, my, your energy did not give me fun energy. But you use the word forget. Yeah. Never underestimate the power of a human to forget, <laughs> bro. <laughs> like you give them a new experience so quickly do they adjust we adapt mm -hmm. to the new experience man home homeostasis where i was just living in this house right you in the new house for a month and it feel like you've been there forever so people wonder why you can have a news cycle and something's hot on an artist right it seems yeah. like they about to go under what's going on with kai right now don't be surprised if people forget in a year's time, especially, and Kanye's not moving just as how he, how he was. Yeah. Because we forget our own experiences. Oh, you working that job? I remember I was working this job. If I think back, it felt like I worked for a year, but I was only working there three months. It was a deadbeat job when I was in college. And once I got out of that experience, things, gone. it was gone, man. <laughs> gone. Never happened, bro. Never <laughs> <laughs> Wipe it under the rug. So, so yeah, man. Um, like that. That is actually like that last domino in, in in the scenario you just said, man. That forgetting is powerful. He's like, yeah, you go through that pain, but boy, <laughs> shoot, once you get to the top of that mountain, boy, oh, that rush <laughs> of adrenaline. And you don't even you don't realize it, it kind of did you dirty, bro. You kind of yeah. got finessed this whole way. You scarred, you beat up, you bleeding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got open wounds. But it's like, oh, it's got it. What they call it? Uh, not imposter syndrome. <sighs> What's the one? A war wound. No, the one when you're you're in prison and you start to love the people who are in prison. You. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the word for it. That's it, what that is. Yeah, it is that. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, bro. That's really exactly what it is. That's what it is, man. They they playing with it, so. Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm. There, yeah, there we, we go. go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. All right, we got two quick topics, man. Some quick hits, but we, I, I definitely got to play this because we, we've been wanting to play this for a couple weeks. Travis Scott with the bots. If y'all want to know how his Travis old manager, man, he used bots, man. He's and nothing else. That's like, all yeah, that happened. Is, this clip is crazy. Yeah, it's about to shatter some hopes and beliefs. 
<laughs> and reinforce some some of y'all conspiracy theories. <laughs> Uh, check this out. His old manager, Stephen Morris, admitted that he hacked the SoundCloud system when Travis was coming up to... First, my name's Shane Morris, not Stephen Morris, and I didn't really hack the SoundCloud system as much as deploy a lot of bots, and I'll show you how I did it right now. Turnkey cloud server of your choice, I like Ubuntu 2204, $6 a month. Firefox doesn't depend upon Wayland, so you'll need to run Xorg. Yes to install. Run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. As a technical note, you can also run Ubuntu inside a container if you want to do that. I recommend Docker, and then you could redeploy them with Docker Swarm, and you could scale this almost infinitely. Anyway, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Sudo apt install x init. It'll install, it takes... All right, I don't want people's brains to fry. Just That's listen to this. I don't know what he's saying, bro. <laughs> Especially for y'all who are just potting. Like, you can't see, uh, you can't see it. Um, Speaking a different language, bro. <laughs> basically, a... He got bots for six dollars a month. Yeah, and and it was for SoundCloud, which is we know what what happens when people figure out new tech before the rest of the industry does. It's, yes, it's, it's really the the true like ultimate cheat code. If you can figure out this big tech driver before everybody else realizes you can do it, you are gonna grow like crazy because by the time everybody figures out they can do it, one is too late, and then two, there are things being implemented to stop it. You know, yep. by the time everybody else realizes they could do the bot strategy. Because there were hella people in what was that twenty probably sixteen seventeen maybe yep. eighteen implementing bot strategies they were too late they were now doing it at a time where people were getting caught for it and then yep. you think about where SoundCloud was at the time and even just something like that we weren't aware of it so our first thought isn't like oh he's gaming this you know what I'm saying because we don't even know that could be done right maybe some industry people probably thought that right but it's like when people first started to have like oh fifty thousand a hundred thousand a million followers and you don't even think that any of these could be pay, uh, yeah. fake. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, we talk a lot about how how much perception plays into your, your marketing, right? Yeah. So I can only imagine back then it's probably looking like, oh man, son, Travis Scott's growing like crazy on SoundCloud. You know, labels probably seeing that like, oh, let's have a conversation with him. And he made good music, like, which I feel like we have to emphasize. Like, you, Always. Can, you can find a finesse. If you have good music and you can find a finesse, Chances are you're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Because um, yep. the finesse is only work for the artists with good music. If you finesse without good music, people, we just laugh at you and think you're crazy, right? It's like, damn, why'd you do that? That shit didn't make no sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that he was so early to that, one, is crazy. Two, Shane's background, like just being lucky enough to be connected to someone like that, that can put a system like that together for you, that is luck in itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. think about all the managers. Yes. Artists come across, bro. How many of them know how to speak whatever language that was? <laughs> <laughs> like, how many, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think yeah. a lot of managers, well, not, I wouldn't say a lot of managers, but like, you think of managers having like traditional skills, though. they probably understand record contracts and, mm -hmm. and, you know, relationships, which probably are all things I'm sure he understood at the time as well. But then it's like, hey, my manager has this one very unique skill set mm -hmm. that most of y'all managers don't, probably don't have, and we about to gas this shit. Yo, that's a that goes back to that conversation about the people on your team. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can find people who have these additional skills outside of music, especially for indie teams, yeah, like you want to find value in places that the industry typically doesn't have on lock, mm -hmm. because then you'll be able to have a connect. It's like, oh man, this person has all types of sponsorships because they came or they understand the sponsorship um, arena because they work corporate and they have all these connections, so they don't need to go through labels to get you the money. They can go straight to deals, even though you're not yeah. a big artist because yeah. they ran that game. Yeah. All right. Or yeah, they might be from tech or they got a whole bunch of tech friends so they can code and hack to do certain things. Yeah. There's all these other seemingly obscure talents that you can apply to you. And if you look at your team, if you can find a couple of folks like that who have different arenas and backgrounds to add towards the standard that's required in music, that's when you start doing stuff different, right? That's when you are early to something like NFTs because they're just mm -hmm. in NFTs and you're able to do it right. Not like, oh, I just tried to drop something and nothing really happened or I did a little scam, but no, you did the thing right. That's what Snoop Dogg is doing so well. Yeah. Uh, he knows how to keep people who understand these other categories outside of music around him, however he's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like we already know <laughs> for him to discover our boy, you know, and hop on a track with, you know, uh, 
Can we even say that? I feel like not yet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but to even understand and find that he existed at that level and hop on the track, right? Yeah. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's something that's valuable at every single level. And when you, for those who are hearing this, I'll just leave it at that. Like, yes, even somebody at Snoop Dogg, like at that level, right? Typically, to stay at that level, you are keeping your ears to the street in some way, mm -hmm. whether that's the street on the internet and you understand that very well. Because you got to think, Snoop Dogg also been doing the YouTube show for so long. Like, his digital game is Crazy. stupid yeah. for an artist his size. There's nobody moving like that at that size. Like, he's moving in a true, like, indie organic grassroots way mm -hmm. than what he's built digitally. And, or you just translate it to a more traditional, like, I'm Jay-Z or somebody like that. And we have young people around us, right? To let us know what's going on with trends in music or Kanye and trends in fashion or whatever, right? It's keeping your ears to the street in some form of fashion is extremely valuable once you get up there, but it's exceedingly valuable when you're just trying to make it and get on in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So I think people need to stress that a lot more. Uh, we got this other, this last thing because we've been holding on to this. And it's just about the Suicide Boys. I don't know if y'all know about the Suicide Boys, but oh, I was I was checking them out pretty heavy, probably starting three years back. But what's crazy is Suicide Boys are the highest streaming independent artists in the world. Pre-Tyler Swift. Pre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would suck. <laughs> that suck. Hey, you're not getting that back. <laughs> you not get. <laughs> uh, yeah, Taylor came and messed the game up. I died. I'm like, man, that don't count, cause <laughs> she tells us what. Bro, that's the argument I make. Like, bro, she tells us what. We're not beating her, bro. Right. That, that for real. That doesn't really count. But it's still impressive because of one, like how long they've been around. Two, just how much they stray away from like mainstream looks, which they speaks a lot to that. They legit yeah. stay away from like mainstream. Just, yeah. Like a, I, I don't know. I don't. I won't say scared, but like they really just like, nah, we're not doing that. So to be even considered, should even being considered to be one of the highest independent streamer artists with that type of reputation speaks volumes because it's like it really shows it like, hey, like you don't need the mainstream looks per se. If you can build like this cult fan base, which they have, they have a, a massive cult fan base at this point. They've been around for like a long ass time. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, bro, they'll push the needle for you in, in such a way that like you'll still be competing with people who get better looks than you. Because there are probably thousands of artists that we can name that have gotten better looks than they have over the course of their careers. I'm not even close to touching that number. Not even close. It's a, so 1.8 billion streams lifetime. Right now they have 9.5 million monthly listeners. That number, I mean, once you start getting to nine, I mean, once you really get to two, three monthly listeners, yeah. you're doing something special. Yeah, I consider one million to be like entry level mainstream. Yep. Yeah, you're like you're yep. like at the bottom of the top of the totem pole. Two, yep. three is like okay, you starting to get a little footing in it. Five and up is like you know, cause I want I want to say like Smino probably has like five or six million monthly listeners. To me, he's like in a weird middle space. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not a superstar, but he's not like small artist yet. So it's like yeah, but nine million to me would be the equivalent of being like. A seven out of like a six or seven out of ten, you know what I'm saying? Type of artist. Like, mm, all right, so what's if that's mm, maybe five, six? Let's start at 10. What's 10? That's like the Drake title Swift. Bad so that's line. 50 million and above, yeah, ish. Maybe 30 million. Nine might be 30 million, yeah. All right, so that's like Jay Z's at like 30 million, yeah. Um, right, Chris Brown. Chris Brown, I think let's, he's at 20 or 30. Let's see what Chris is. What, how, how does Chris have less than Jay Z's? No way. 48 million. Oh, 48? Bam. Yeah, well, so... Yeah, man, but he also got a viral TikTok moment right now. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, was, but he's up he being like... Yeah, but, you know, but that was also a whole song. Hey, that's, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> all of it counts. All of it counts. Yeah. So then, yeah, that's like... So, yeah, that 48, 50 million, you, you are 10, 10 yeah. off of all artists' brand. Yeah. I'm actually surprised Jay-Z has somewhere in the 30. But I think he yeah, he's at 31. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, so, all right. So, that's nine. Yeah. So, 20s is eight. Yeah. So, 10 would be like seven. Wait, what? No, oh, said, oh, like, 10, no. no. If, if 20s is eight, yeah. Okay, 10. Yeah, the, the teens. Yeah. yeah. The teens. So, nine is six. Right at six. You yeah. said six, seven. Yeah. I can see that. So, six. Let's go all the way down the road. Let's, let's go ahead and rank them then. So, six, if you're 
now it has to get smaller. You're at level six if you're between, let's say, five and ten. Yeah, five. Yeah. Well, we said nine for that. It'd be like five to eight. Somewhere in there, five to eight point something. You know. No, nine is six. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Nine million and up is a six, right? No. So, nine million is basically the cap. Ten yeah. million and up is a seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's nine, six. We're at nine, six. So, yeah, so five would be, yeah, I'd probably say like six to eight. Somewhere in there. Uh, four being, you know, probably like closer to three or four. Three being. Three or four monthly listeners. Yeah. Million monthly listeners. Yeah. And then, so then two is two million. Yeah. And yeah. then one is one million. So yeah. anything less than that, you're just not in the game yet. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> not the mainstream, entry level, main, well, not the mainstream game, at least. You know what? I would take that back. I would say 700. 700. If it's a consistent 700 to a million ish, that would be level one. Entry level mainstream to me. I don't know. Like 700,000? Yes. I feel like 700,000, you're like standing on the doorstep of mainstream. They just ain't opened the door for you yet. Because one, or once you're at 700,000, you just couple it with looks. Because remember, looks can make you more mainstream than you are musically. Yeah, okay, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's so. True. That's what I'm going with. Seven hundred thousand. You could be mainstream if you have certain types of looks, but if you're just straight streaming, then you know you're doing well, but you're not technically mainstream just off of the strength of your streams. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like a million when like the major industry starts to take you seriously. To them, you're like a new artist. I'm like, oh, I got a million. Oh my yeah. Like, oh, if <laughs> to some of these folks, if you have a million streams and they come across you they just discovered you yeah like they are the one oh i remember one. i just i discovered such and such who had a million streams already <laughs> they, they they out here christopher columbus and people yeah. basically they like discovered but bro was at five million month listeners when <laughs> when you start hey, talking about him that's not nothing on my scale <laughs> right, you, you you a little itty bitty right it, it makes me think of this conference that me and sam went to one time because i always remember this oh was, yeah yeah bro it was like a booking conference and i just remember this lady on stage talking about discovering new talent and she talked about how like yeah we got this new artist we're excited about like she's new bubbling her name is summer walker and like bro this, is, this wasn't that long ago this is like two three years ago like i'm like <laughs> i remember when she said it me and sam looked at you like summer walker a new bubbling artist like what are you talking about and I, that was when it clicked for me like how out the loop people at that level really are, or like, or even put into context, like what they consider to be like underground and new and bubbling, right? It's like, oh yeah, like I think she had just dropped the first song she had with Drake on it at that point. Mm. And so us that know, knows about her, that's kind of like, oh man, this is a huge moment for her. She really don't level it up. But then that was probably the the point where probably like 90% of that room had ever first heard of her. Now kind of looking back on it, thinking about the people that were in that room, the environment and I that moment. It. Yeah. I so believe it. It was just wild to hear, bro. Like when she said, "Like Summer Walker, new, new artist." What, bro? I was like, she's done millions of streams at this point. Bro, it's like being in a room full of billionaires, and you talk about your hundred mil. Yeah, I'm like, hey, good for you, bro. Yeah, you, you'll get there one day. Like, oh like, man, okay. <laughs> but, new wealth, you on your path. I don't know if you remember, but it always makes me think of that first time we went to that. When we went to that Playlist Supply concert, uh, Playlist Supply conference, and we was at that YouTube Playlist thing. Supply conference, not supply. Um, what was it called? Playlist Push. Was it Playlist Push? Remember that influencer conference we went to? In Florida? Oh, not Playlist Push. That's the company. But playlister, I think something like that. Something but, like yeah, that. Yeah, in Florida. Yeah, when we we're in that room with the other YouTubers and everyone talking, I was like, "Oh, bro, y'all 100k, man, y'all, y'all get that million one day." And I was like, right. <laughs> "Like, bro, we didn't even come here as YouTubers. We came here as, as business people, bro. Like, don't be over here breaking down my back end. I ain't asking you to do that. You be giving me words of encouragement. Hey, pause on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I was about to ask you for your influence, right? Why are we talking about me right now? Right. But that, it right. clicked for me then too. I was like, man, there's a there's a level to this hierarchy, bro. Like, you know, hey. so then I was like, hey, bro, you just got in the game. So hey. you got a whole nother level that hey. you gotta keep working your way into. That is you wonder why they keep working so hard when they already there, because they started meeting new people, bro. Yeah, and it's, that was the same conference where I remember that woman saying that to brands like in the YouTube world, I don't even consider you in the game until you hit a million subscribers. I remember mm -hmm. that was the first place I ever heard that. and I was like, damn, a million? Man, how about it? K plot. You know what I'm saying? We got nine months to go. Dog, it's, <laughs> it's a different world. I remember uh, Mario. You remember Mario? The, the you arts? should let me love you. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember hearing him talk about, you know, the actor 
uh, artists, money, all that stuff, you know, mm. running numbers up. And he said, you start getting his access and you start being around these people who got way, 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 way more money. And he's like, you never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Not associated with music at all. He's just like, man, it just changed his whole perspective. And he's like, man, I got to figure out how to get up out of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, you own this? Are you such and such daughter? And hey, it's them levels, man. You got a gravel company? Like, Gra- how much from that? Gravel company. Who was... My dad told me yesterday about a black-owned bread company. I think they were the first launch black-owned bread company. Oh. Like, just sliced bread. Yeah. It's like, it's like, hey, man, like, people do got to eat bread. <laughs> that's that's my next business, bro. I'm making cement or something. I don't know. Find something boring and make it <laughs> sexy, man. Yeah. Like, for real. And sometimes you ain't got to make it sexy. Just find something boring that nobody else want to do well. I'd yeah. definitely be thinking about that in my <laughs> my uh my music retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go find one of these companies, chill out, and then just pop up. Yeah, maybe flip it around. Maybe at a time like I don't know, like Tom or somebody be lit. And I'm like, hey, bro, come be the face of my concrete company. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna see it coming, bro. Nobody's gonna ever expect the artist to be the face of a concrete company. Bro. We could change the landscape. Let's do it. How we gonna? How, how we gonna tie the mail in with you know the <laughs> like we want, the mail, man. We want every every sixteen year old in the country to be asking for bricks of concrete for Christmas. That's what I want to have my hey, campaign. You can use Gucci man. Actually that would be fun. Bricks, baby. That would be crazy. Hey. That, I can't believe nobody's ever tried to do that before, bro. Bruh. <laughs> Get your That's bricks it. from Stanley Bricks and <laughs> Company. Hey, bro, you wanna you wanna be able to sell bricks without having to get in trouble? Up for, hey, yo, we we selling bricks, baby. Oh man, <laughs> bro, nobody better steal that idea. Oh no, nah, yeah, nah, no brick layers watching this. We, we, <laughs> no concrete people watching this. <laughs> actually, bro, I did a consultation call with a guy who was actually laying brick as I would. We we talked. That's crazy. Yeah, Dude. it was funny enough, bro. It was, <laughs> it was crazy part about it was he was not that far from where I was in the moment because I was like, bro, he was on Zoom. He was working. He was like, my bad, you know, I'm doing work. I was like, bro, you in the cater? He was like, yeah, man. How you know? I was just like, yeah, man. I recognize. I'm from the cater. I just recognized the, what the sky looked like. The trees. <laughs> like, it just felt like. <laughs> <laughs> but dude was literally yeah, laying like bricks while we while we talk. But hey, with that being said, man, we, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Do not steal our ideas. Like, we, we're gonna start coming with left field ideas and just implementing for these like Gucci Mane with the bricks. We're gonna find all kind of companies, bro, and match people. And we need to figure out how to get that money. Uh brick layers, if y'all out there and y'all need a connect, we will connect you with Gucci for a, 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 a small fee, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and a little equity. But we, but the, but the money you make will be worth it. This is another episode of No Labels Necessary coming soon to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Check for it. I'm Sean. I'm Corey, and we out. Peace. Peace.